Sean Capri, and welcome to We the Gamer Cast. It publishes on youtube.com slash carpool gaming and podcast services on every single hemisphere of planet Earth. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing, for leaving a comment to YouTube, hitting the like button, for telling your mom, for telling your dad, for telling your cousin, for telling the, the grocer, for telling the, the, the bag boy, the box boy, the, 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 the produce manager at your local grocery store. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm stoked that you're here. I've already had the conversation with Mostly Martinez. You are about to hear the conversation with Mostly Martinez, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself because if you're new, here's the deal. Every week I have sweet hangs with a stranger from the internet and we talk about life in video games and if you want to be on the show or if you just want to let me know how it's going, you can tweet at me at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. You guys, uh, we're, we're going in for the long haul today. I am all over the place. I'm, I'm going coast to coast, butter and toast here. I was, I was in Kelowna, British Columbia. You owe it to yourself to like, just Google map it. I know sometimes when I say these things, like I'm in a XX place in, in Canada, everybody's like, well, what does that even mean? Look it up. Kelowna is pretty sweet. You guys should check it out. And if you get like, that's when, when we talk about uh, Canada is a beautiful place. We're talking about places like Kelowna, my friends. Uh, I did a, a work conference there. And basically got to host my own panel, <laughs> which was pretty sweet. Like I, we did a, we did a fireside chat and, uh, we talked about professional things and got lots of engagement and questions from the audience. And it was a total blast. I want to do that pretty much all the time. I mean, that's kind of what basically what this is. And so very cool week so far. It's Friday night as I record this. It's a, it's 10 58 PM as I look at the clock and I leave for Toronto at uh what is it nine o'clock in the morning i think tomorrow so i've got a got a couple things to do i still got to make sure i'm all packed up i would like to i am endeavoring to go to the gym in the morning before <laughs> before i fly out we'll see how that goes um energy drinks is what it's going to be about this weekend you guys holy crap flying out to toronto we're going to do fan fest and so for many of you who are listening to this on free feeds on mondays um this has already happened so stay tuned to Carpool Gaming for whatever else we're going to be talking about. Man, it's like it's Summer Game Fest weekend. I am, as Donnie would say, I am eating every last little bit of hype. I am stoked. We did our, our reacts live at YouTube.com slash Carpool Gaming with uh, Babbitt was there and Court and Ryan, and it was great. I had a blast. I'm not sure everybody was stoked about what we saw, but I had so much fun. And on that note, I was not able to check out the Devolver one live. I wasn't able to, to live stream it or anything. But you guys owe it to yourselves to go to um, either Twitch or, or YouTube.com slash PSVG. Check out, check out PSVG's reaction to the Devolver, whatever, what did they call it? The countdown, the marketing countdown to marketing or something like that with uh, Mecha Suda 51. It was absolutely amazing. And those guys have such a huge appreciation for it. I regret having to miss it, but that's exactly when my when my panel was happening. So unavoidable. But I'm basically living out of a suitcase over these last couple of days. And uh, in, in, for Toronto, I'm packing up my my Sea of Thieves backpack, and I, I literally am bringing like microphones with me, laptops, webcams that are stuffed into a sock so that they don't get scratched up. And life is pretty interesting right now. But I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm so glad that you guys are here with me on this journey that I call life, man. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people on this journey. And they come on this journey at patreon.com slash carpool gaming. And they make all of this stuff happen. This whole, like, trip to Toronto, not even close without people at patreon.com slash carpool gaming. And I want to quickly say... A wonderful and heartfelt thank you to all of our 90 patrons, 90-ish, maybe I think we're at 85 or so, um, but especially our ultimate producers, Tony Baker from Quest for Pixels. Go to youtube.com slash quest for pixels right now. Dallas Ford, the co-host of The Blame Game. He hosts out with Argo. Support Dallas and Argo at YouTube to get these guys... Are you guys at 100 subs? I haven't checked. Actually, I, I should check. Uh, Emily O'Kelly, Trucker Sloth, Jonathan Brown. Download that new album, In My Element, on Spotify and Apple Music. Drew Agnew, the handsome son of a bitch from the House of Mario podcast. Lee Navarro, my friend from Rome, New York, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team. Join the Extra Life team with me. We're playing video games for those kids coming in November. And Skinny Matt, who's hosting Carpool Gaming Community Game Nights. He did a Mario Kart one that I wish that I was there for. For twitch.tv slash skinny matt k all the links for the show notes or sorry all the links are in the show notes for all these amazing ultimate producers 
please support them because they support us to a just ridiculous level. Platinum producers Brendan Myers, Dano, Marcus McCracken, mostly Martinez, that's familiar, Becky Rubin Navarro, and Robbie Bobby Miller, and RJ Kern, and our gold members Anna Argo, Ashley Nicholson, Cecily Carroza, Dallas Ford, I'm sorry, Dallas Robbins, Foolish Fuji, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time, Marcus O'Neill, Nagachaka, The Snack Network, Tom Danks, and Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots. And uh, welcome back, by the way, to Bowza and Sean Hennigan. You guys are amazing, and Patreon continues to click along. We've got tons of exclusive content coming up. We're going to do the gridlock. Have I talked to you guys about the gridlock? This is We've officially, because uh, it's, it's carpool related, it's traffic related, it's like a traffic jam, and everybody's mad at each other. So this is where we're fighting about games. And which one is better, The Last of Us 1 or The Last of Us 2? Um, we have selected the teams. This is happening in the Discord with preferential selection and listening to patrons. So stay tuned for that. Um, Badbit and I, we're going to be doing another console war room later on this week because there's a lot of Xbox and PlayStation stuff happening. Donnie and I were recording Sweet Hangs later on this week as well. Like there is so much exclusive content. It's like we actually might have more stuff going on on Patreon than the free feeds at this point, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Um, all I know is I love doing this and I love that you guys are here for it and I appreciate every single one of you guys. I was going to, I was going to go on a bunch of, but a bunch of other stuff, but, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to actually get right into my wonderful conversation with a good friend, mostly Martina Martinez. Um, we've been kind of chatting back and forth for gosh, for quite some time. And we'll get into that into the conversation here. Um, he recently launched a new podcast called the mostly star Wars podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Mostly Martinez. Let's just jump right on into it with a quick Pac-Man little sound bit that I got from OC Remix. Please enjoy my conversation with Mostly Martinez. So my wife and I, we've kind of like lived in a bunch of different places, right? And um, we lived in Colorado where she's from. Mm -hmm. um, well, Grew up at least and the water there is amazing but yeah. i'm just so used to drinking like bottled water that right. it's, it's like a habit for me so yeah. anytime i would drink like water from the faucet go to like a friend's house and you know they don't do bottled water i drink it. i'm like hey it's not bad not bad look this mountain yeah. clear water i don't know but like there's all these beer commercials apparently the the beer tastes better when they brew it near a mountain they've got like right. this i don't know brewery just off the the cliff of a, okay. of a giant mountain somewhere sure yeah absolutely yep. So how you been, dude? It's good to see you finally. I know. That's what I was thinking. Like it's, yeah, it's kind man. of a, it's kind of been like a long time coming, I kind of feel like. Yeah, but definitely. I, fe I felt like we were first gonna like play games together, but that just hasn't happened. Has that <laughs> and, and you know what the we and what did we just discover that we were in the same time zone like not that long ago? Yeah. Cause yeah. I was mowing the lawn. <laughs> You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's not that late. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, just like north of you, dude. I, I think when you sent when we were talking about doing this podcast, I think you told me the time in uh, Eastern time. I always do too. for everybody. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just, and so then I just, then I just even more so assume like, Oh, you must be like an Eastern time zone. And yeah, no, everybody else's. And this is maybe, maybe this is a thing that you and I, and, and there's a few others. There's very few of us in the mountain time zone. Justin Masson from Nintendo dads claims that mountain time zone is the only time zone that really matters. But I feel <laughs> like I, I constantly am just like translating time zones yeah. for people like i'm i'm mm -hmm. always like okay well i won't say what time zone it is for me i'm always like whatever it is for everybody else but you right. know what one of these one of these days i'm gonna run out of that patience and it's like no yeah not again <laughs> we're talking mountain time zone man that's what uh -huh. I, I gotta rewind my clocks and i'll get it all figured out but in any case yeah yeah, yeah for man sure. i'm glad yeah, we I see uh, i see you popping up like you know i got you as a friend mm -hmm. on like every console, I feel like mm -hmm. so I'll always see you online. I was like, oh man, one of these days we got to play. But I know, send me an. No. What do you What are you playing these days? Like, what do you want to? What would we pair up with? So, right now I'm playing like a ton of Switch. Nice. Which yeah, like eventually we'll we will probably end up talking about this. But I think a big thing is because my son is super into Splatoon right now. Splatoon oh, nice. Two. Yeah, man. <laughs> and and so you know, usually we're taking turns doing that. Or um, we have a, a OLED switch and then a switch light, My and man. you know you can't you can't cross over the saves. So <laughs> you're we telling can. me, oh my god! 
<laughs> so that's another thing we could get into. But basically, so we almost in a way have like kind of our own. Yeah. You know, and then we'll flip flop. It's not necessarily one's his or or the other, sure. but but yeah, so sometimes we'll we'll both be playing, you know, trying to to rank up, get different guns or or whatever yeah. it is. But but yeah. What, uh, how old is he? How old is your son? He's he's gonna be six in on July seventh. So. Okay. Yeah, like our kids are pretty pretty close and Lincoln is uh, he just turned five and I mean there's I mean when you're a kid it's if you're eight months apart it's like Nope, they are completely different. Like yeah. they're totally, but not really. I don't know. It's it's yeah. such a weird thing that happens as you get a little bit older, and yeah, like mm-hmm. years don't really even seem to make a difference. But yeah, right. like when when kids are kids, six months, pff, different grades, man. Like uh-huh. not, <laughs> they won't even be friends. What the heck? Yeah, and Once, then for a while you talk about kids in in months, right? Right. So yeah. You're like you know, this many months, this many months, and mm-hmm. and it's just just uh, the one for you guys. You only just the just the boy. Um, and then we have a two-year-old daughter. Oh, you're in it, dude. So, yeah. yeah. How's she? <laughs> you, that's like us, though. We got a five-year-old uh, boy and then and Ellie's three. So, like, we're pretty pretty yeah. close. Look at that. We're like the same yeah. person, same time yeah. zone. Same two time kids. zone. Same kids. <laughs> what else is there? I think that's it. <laughs> and then, like, I, you know, you never really want to talk about this, you know, with people that didn't get this. But mm-hmm. we can talk about it. But we got, like, the perfect, like, kid, like, situation right you got I'm, one of each i'm with you yeah you got the boy first yeah you know it's, yes it, <laughs> it's kind of like what you that's the ideal like two kid one yeah. of each boy first situation and mm-hmm. yeah it was you know it that's was, funny it was, i i didn't know if anybody else felt that way actually but that's definitely how i was like okay boy and, and there's <clears throat> we did a whole like gender reveal for both of yeah. them and definitely with lincoln the whole thing went um chelsea ordered a cake and she said if it's a girl it was going to be mario themed so if it's a girl it would be pink and yellow and if it was a boy f- for peach and then um for a boy red and blue for mario and uh-huh. so i'll never forget it chelsea she she cut the first cut into the cake and then took the knife back out and the red that was in the cake came up on the to the knife but it looked pink no. so <laughs> so my face and people you, you can slow down like ralph wiggum like you can see the moment like I'm like, oh no! <laughs> I thought it was a girl first. So then she cuts. Oh, no. Then she makes the second cut, pulls the piece away, and then it's red and blue. And I'm, and then I just change <laughs> to the other side, like a oh, boy. Yeah. Yes, and I don't know. Uh-huh. Like it's, I obviously would have been happy either way. But like, the, I mean, right. that kind of told you the gut instinct. Yeah, right there. I, yeah, yeah. That whole story you're explaining, we did the same thing. And we did, uh, <laughs> but we did like the cannons. Yeah. You know? And so, like, I was like, same thing. I would have been excited either way. But mm-hmm. since we had that on camera, you could totally tell. Oh, as yeah. soon as we, I saw it was a boy, I was like, way hype. Yeah, and and, and it, equally yeah. for the second one, right? Yeah. Like when it comes when the when it's a girl, you're like, yeah, like that. I don't know. Yeah. It was yeah, it's perfect mm-hmm. like that. I think so. Yeah, I, my wife always makes fun of me that as soon as soon as we found out that we were gonna have a boy, you know, from the doctor and everything um on the way home i was like i think we could probably have a girl yeah <laughs> yeah she's like let me get the first one out first and mm-hmm. then we'll go from there <laughs> it's just like what's familiar like i don't know what yeah. actually, if it actually is better but de- like familiar from like obviously i'm a boy so like having a boy like yeah that seems to make sense and then for my family it was the same thing like yeah. we had there was three boys and then my sister came along probably mm-hmm. accidentally <laughs> afterwards <laughs> as the fourth one like yeah probably not yeah. exactly drawn up are you guys having more is that even fair to ask at this point um i think we're we're good and i think it kind of goes along with what we've been talking about yeah i think it, if if it would have been different in some sort of way i yeah. think maybe we would have thought about it more but like I if think, you had two boys you know, Right. Would you go for a girl? Two boys, yeah. two boys, two girls or something like that. I think it would have been more of a discussion, but yeah. I feel like right now we're just, we're good. <laughs> I'm scared of twins. I'm scared. Of, like yes. if you go like for one more, they come out like two or three, like good. Yeah, that's God, exactly what man. I said. And yeah. this is a funny story too. So, so my son, he was like super good with my daughter. Um, yeah. My son has a Kaya, super good with Kayari, you know, as their babies. But that's now that she's names. getting older, now they have to share, you know, mm-hmm. now she wants to be playing the game, even though she can't really do it that well. Yeah. You know, so he's, you know, kind of getting that and Hezekiah is 
pretty chill for the most part. Yeah. And then Kyari is like pretty wild for the most part. It's the same with us, dude. Lincoln is yeah. just so chill, like whatever. Like, okay, sounds good. Like that's that's just mm-hmm. him. Like almost to a fault, which was a lot like me. And then yeah, Ellie, like, holy, she is totally opposite, man. Yeah. And it's so when, we probably yeah, did when, something to deserve this somewhere along the line. Yeah. This exactly. is probably karma at work. Yep. I think so for sure. We we're I can't remember what we were doing. But Kyrie just started freaking out about something. And anyways, Hezekiah just looked us like dead in the eye. And he was like, <laughs> do you really want another Kyari? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's amazing. And we were just like, we were busting up laughing. But yeah, he was like dead serious. Like, you really want more kids? Like, you want another one of those? <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Yeah, he's he's definitely against it. Like, if you ask him, like, oh, do you think, you know, you think Mama should have another kid? He's like, no. <laughs> yeah, he has so, like, obviously an awareness of like what it like. I don't know, not necessarily how it all works, but like that it's a choice. Like that you could. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's that's hilarious. We've definitely yeah. asked our kids back in, like a number of times, and they they kind of give you. It just depends on the day. They give you a different answer all the time. Yeah. But video, mm-hmm. like there is something very special about being able to share video games. Like there's definitely something like with our generation, I think more so not that it never existed, because I've heard lots of wonderful stories about people playing Tetris with their mom and things like that back yeah. in the day. But it does seem like much more more common. And like what better way to connect with your kids than to like be involved and understand how the games work and all this stuff and actually like want to do it like kids will do a gazillion things and where the interests actually collide with the parents. It's pretty mm-hmm. tough, man. It's pretty, it's pre- there's decades to separate us. Yeah. You know, we're in totally different places. So yeah. Heck yeah. As video games get mm-hmm. these nice relationships going. That's special, man. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think what you just said is super important because my parents weren't into video games. Yeah. You know, they didn't like go to the arcade as kids. They didn't like own consoles or anything like that. that yeah. That wasn't a thing. I mean, the, the lives that they lived, uh, my mom's one of 10 and she's wow. the oldest and my dad's one of nine. So both of them have like huge families, you know, yeah. like super busy, like not a mm-hmm. lot of money to go around for everybody. Sure. So neither one of them grew up with that. And mm-hmm. so I think, you know, when uh, I might as well just tell you this story of how I got my first console. Jump into it. <laughs> so uh, my parents, they weren't super against it but like Mm -hmm. i said they were never into it so that was definitely not something they were going to go out of their way for obviously all the kids at school you know had you know their super nintendos and segas and stuff Mm -hmm. and i wanted one so bad my neighbors had one so we after school we'd like bust over there and you know play like you know tmnt or this is the same thing as me dude we're the same person (laughs) it was my neighbor he had everything that's awesome Yeah, yeah he had everything and he was just yeah it was just like he didn't even care, but he had everything, yeah. right? So we'd go over there and play all the time. And anyways, it was when the Nintendo 64 came out. Yeah. And we were dying to get it. And by that point, you know, we were old enough to be like telling my parents, like, we'll do whatever, you know. Who is <laughs> we? Can... Like, what's the what's oh, the sibling have, situation? So I have one brother. Okay. I have one yeah. older brother. He's two years older than me. Okay. And yeah, pretty close. So, yeah. So we're begging to get this thing. And anyways, my, my grandparents, my dad's parents... Anyways, they they came for a surprise visit and they're chatting with us and my parents were gone somewhere doing something. And anyways, we end up telling them about this thing. And (laughs) so my grandparents are like broken English, speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) like, you know, they're, you know, my grandma's just like, what? You know, they're not getting something for you or whatever. Like, what do you guys want? (laughs) And and so we're just like, and we're just like really feeding it, you know, like, oh, everybody has one. And we're the only people in the school (gasps) that don't and all this type of stuff. She's getting mad. She's just like, what? You know, like, they, why won't they get it for you and all this stuff? And anyways, long story short, she's like, come on, we're going right now. So anyway, she took me and my brother to Toys R Us. Yeah, we go, we get a, you know, Nintendo 64 off the shelf. And then she's like, pick four games. And we're just like, we're like, yes. So anyways, I I think we got, let's see, we got um, Rush 2049. And I don't even know what that is, dude. I've never well, even I, heard of that. You, you haven't played a Rush? There's like no. San Francisco Rush and oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. So it's like that racing kind of game. Yep. And then uh, we got Starcraft. Oh, oh, look it up. 
Starcraft 64 was one of your yes. first four yeah. games. That's it amazing. Was the first game we got. And then. So it's been out yeah. for a bit at this point. It's not like you went up and got like a launch system at all. No. Like, yeah, yeah. Games are coming they, out. Okay. Yeah. They, I think we, we got it. So it came out and we were begging to get it until like, um, Donkey Kong 64 came out and they Whoa, had the system yeah. with it. Okay. So yeah. it was a while. Probably like 98, and, 99, something like yes, that. Yep. Yeah. And then, so that system was already out, but it was sold out. So then we got, that was one of the games we got too, was Donkey Kong 64. Dude, this is the most <laughs> like unique collection of games, like as a first set. Like, is Mario in there at all? Like, do you, is the we fourth one? Get, we didn't get Mario for quite a while. <laughs> So how come like what were you not was it not there like were you not just so, like what, well, this is so yeah, interesting to me so when we were just like picking games like you know we were just shocked I think was part of it but right we, and every, <laughs> hadn't prepared every game for this we moment. picked up was just like you know in awe it was like another world right you're no looking kidding. at like the game case and you're just like whoa you know oh, everything looked amazing it was hard to choose yeah and I think the craziest <laughs> thing of it is so Starcraft we played that game like 45 hours straight you know like we would leave the console on because you know you're building right you're just you know you could play two player and build against each other and stuff i've never actually seen it in action i've never i've only i've obviously seen it like a cartridge of it a million times over but i've never Mm -hmm. seen it and i played on pc and i know that you play pc gaming as well so i actually thought Mm -hmm. maybe there might have been a crossover there like you'd played had you played warcraft before like had you played any like real-time strategy that is so amazing to me And that's like, this sounds cool. And that's how, that's how we, like me and my brother really got into it, like into that style of gaming. Like, because like after playing that, we were just so like into it that as soon as we could, you know, we were like wanting to get laptops and have like LAN parties, you know, and play, you know, on PC and stuff. But how, how did you end up kind of like learning? Like, did you have uh, game pro or something like that? Or some other magazines, or I guess the internet, like IGN is probably, actually, yeah, IGN would have been around. At about this yeah. time, I definitely would have been yeah, at so I think the biggest thing back then, and I don't know if this was like it for you, but there was some of the kids that would have, you know, like mm-hmm. the 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 guides or whatever. But yeah. like my parents would never buy that for us. <laughs> yep, same. Yep, <laughs> so, not a chance. You know, like we never had that. But mm-hmm. like we had a network of friends who had games. Yeah. And so like we would just, you know, that was back in the day, like a lot of young listeners won't know this, but, you know, back in the day where you'd like call and leave like messages on house phones. Yo, but, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so we would call and I just re- like I re- vividly remember like so when we finally got Zelda or Karina mm-hmm. time yeah. and we could go into this later, but that was the game that made me think, OK, I'm a gamer and I will play games for the rest yeah. of my life. Yo, that's <laughs> awesome. I bet you and, and so many other people, especially with that game, big time. Yeah. And again, but not yeah. one of the not one of the first four games you picked, not Zelda, nope. not Mario, Donkey Kong 64, Starcraft mm-hmm. 64, this other Rush game. And did you yep. say what the fourth one was? Yeah. And then the let's see. So there was the. Let's see, we got that one. And then I feel like I can't even guess at this point. Yeah, I think it was a Pokemon game. Oh, nice. Like yeah, a Pokemon Snap, it. maybe? It, yeah. What was it yellow? I never had it. Dude, I didn't even oh, have like this yeah. is the thing. Like, I didn't own a 64. <laughs> like, this is the wild. Like, it really was. I relied on neighbor Matt for pretty much everything. Yeah. Or my friend Chance down the street. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, like the like the the cartridge itself, I think, was yeah, yellow. the cartridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I feel like it was that. And like, because yeah. I remember like, because there's also like accessories for that game, right? For Snap. Dude, my first Snap <laughs> game was actually on Switch. Like, it really oh, was. Okay. I, I had to, yeah, I, I had to kind of listen and learn from Rebecca and Garrett and Nintendo Shack and everything like that to yeah. figure what the heck this game was about. I probably would have seen, like, that That was at, a, at an interesting time. And I'm not sure if, like, there's a couple years between us or not, but, like, I would have looked at that game going like, really? Like you're taking pictures. Like I was at that age where I wouldn't have been interested in it where yeah. I think now, and especially after like summer game fest, I was like, I'm open to anything. And it's part of my problem yeah. overall, just like I should be more selective. And that would, that would help me just like actually pick a game every once in yeah. a while. But like everything looks fun to me. Like everything looks so good, dude. I don't yeah. know. And you know? I, th- I think that's part of like it, my issue personally, like, yeah, with really anything, like any sort of entertainment, like I go into it, like wanting to enjoy it, wanting yeah. to have a good time. time. And so I think the hard thing is 
like I don't look at a game or a movie or something and be like, oh, that's going to be bad or anything or have anything negative Mm -hmm. to say about it. And then even if I watch it, maybe it's not the best. I still try to find like good things about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the bad thing is, you know, there's a lot of people there like, man, there's no games to play. Okay, so I want to get back to the fact that, like, you were actually kind of twisting your grandparents' rubber arms <laughs> yeah. throughout this whole thing. Like, did yeah, you so – is that a common it. thing? Yeah, so actually really not. It's really happened, <laughs> like, twice in, yeah. in my life. So that was the first time that we did that. The second time was getting BMX bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like when you go to, like, the like Walmart and Shaq shows up. Have you seen these videos? Like, oh, Shaq great. is just, like, yeah, at Walmart. Yeah. like, hey, man, you got a bike? I, lo- uh-huh. I just love that kind of stuff. Yep. So you got, so, you, got yeah. your, you twisted their, their arm to you'd convince them to get you bikes too. Yep. So yeah, that that was the two big times. No, yeah. they they weren't like you know they were always buying us stuff or anything like that. It was just sure. the two times that we really wanting something super bad. You know, they were they were definitely there to to save the day. But so I I should finish the story. So we come home, you know, the happiest two boys in the world, right? And my parents are like, nope, can't play it. Yeah, that would be my first question. Like, what do your parents think of all of this? <laughs> so anyways, you know, my my grandparents like follow them, like the whole visit that they're there about it. And long story short, at the end, they're just like, no, you guys can't play it. So wow. everything stayed in the boxes for, I'd say, a good month or so. Not and, even like take it back or like sell it nope. or something like it's going to stay in the house and you're going to know exactly where it is. Mm-hmm. You just can't. Yep. Play it. it was just sitting there in like our, our spare bedroom, just oh sitting there like on, on, on our sewing table. So couldn't use it, couldn't play it. <laughs> so and cruel. <laughs> it was the worst. And so obviously all of our friends, you know, are, you know, saying like, oh, you got one and stuff. Because that was the first thing that we did before we even found out. We tell, everybody. Play it. tell everybody. Tell <laughs> everybody. <Yeah>. So. <laughs> no Oh, I never even said. So obviously there's two of us. Yeah. So it came with the gray controller and then mm-hmm. I picked the green one. My so man. Yeah. The, the green Dude, one I love was those. always mine. Yeah. See, again, <laughs> we are the same. I didn't have a 64, but I did have a Game Boy, my first Game Boy, the brick one when they came out in colors. Green. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Just like, and I feel like it's like even the same shade of green. Like the controllers they had for the Game Boys, like the yellow Game Boy was the same as the yellow controller yeah. for 64, the red and all that kind of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, good pick. Yeah. 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 And my actual, my first handheld Game Boy was the Game Boy Color. Oh, I love it, dude. So, that is and, so good. And I had the green one, which was, but it was like a lime green or mm-hmm. kiwi or or whatever it was. Oh yeah, they, that's yeah. They definitely yeah. had a couple of different ones. I I was like the just like the pure. There's just like a dark, like it's like yes. a forest green. Yeah, like a forest yeah. green. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the best. And I don't yeah, even know why. A, like blue is actually my favorite color. It should have been a blue yeah. one. Maybe they just didn't have it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why and I have that, this shirt. We got those like really close to launch. So yeah. um. Yeah, same thing. Go to Toys R Us, and they I I was like, they're like, you know, there's like lines, right? Yeah. So we go, and they're literally like, they have them on a cart, and they're like, what color do you want, type thing, you know? And they say if they oh have my it. Gosh. So, anyways, I was like, oh, I want the green one. They're like, oh, here you go. And then my brother's like, oh, you know, can I get? I don't even know what color he wanted, but they're mm-hmm. like, um, let's see. The only one we have left is like the transparent purple. Yeah, I'm, so I'm going like, to people are not like, going to like okay. hearing this. I didn't like the transparent stuff. Yeah, I didn't either. Yep, yeah, I've never liked any of it. And so, yeah, my brother, the first thing he did, he taped up the screen and spray painted it like metallic silver. Did he really? Doesn't yeah. it like isn't there like a special kind of paint you're supposed to do? I've never probably I've never modded anything even remotely like that. Like I would I'd be way too terrified to totally ruin it. So yeah. he, he probably didn't even like take the shells off or anything. He probably no. just had the just legit just like spray mm-hmm. paints right on top of the control yeah. do you ruin it that's very expensive nope, it, yeah it was fine yeah wow yeah the the so he he did it he did take the back off yeah but like the buttons he just put like a round piece of tape but all the sides still had yeah. like paint on them so like you could feel it when you're clicking on no the kidding he Ka-chunk. was like <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm not going to school with this transparent purple Game oh play. my gosh like the things that kids do to like just to completely destroy property yeah. basically mm-hmm. oh yeah. that's that's brutal like that actually makes me a little bit sick to my stomach to hear like <laughs> it's this perfectly good controller aside from the fact that it's a shade that we don't like 
Right. And yeah, just yeah. spray paint over it. Oh my! Did it like fade though? Like, did it come off on his hands or anything like that? Like, it just—I feel like there's like a really, clear coat or something I got to do, but maybe not. Yeah, I don't think it really came off on his hands, but like it did eventually, like wear. You know, <laughs> like it, wore, it would wear. <laughs> you start like you know? chip it away. You start to see what's underneath. I mean, it's coming yeah. off on something then if it's wearing off. Like it's yeah. <laughs> probably more on more on the hands than you you guys even realize. Yeah, probably. Well, I didn't it, touch the thing, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and kids like touch everything. Everything. They, they touch walls and everything you're like just stop touching stuff it's like yeah ah. my daughter actually we were just out we went for a walk and she um she tripped and she scraped her knee on the sidewalk mm. and not not too terrible but she was bleeding a little bit and i told her i was gonna get her a band-aid which for lincoln is like that's all he needs even if he barely yeah. has a scratch it's just like band-aid yep. will make it feel better which that's not science and mm-hmm. and ellie would that was the last thing that she wanted was a band-aid and I needed to get a bandaid on this chick because, like, she was bleeding all over the place. I'm like, I need to get this thing under control. They're like, yeah. no, I just want to go over here. I'm like, you're gonna bleed on that couch. You're gonna bleed on this stinking blanket and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. it was a was this whole thing. You just nothing can be clean when you get yeah. when you bring kids into the house. Like nothing is the same anymore. Although, yeah. like that space looks very nice. You got a nice little like everything's like yeah. put together. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed. So in there. actually, this is my daughter's like playroom. So, wow dude yeah. holy is it really <laughs> yeah it is perfect so, yeah right here is it's like a the cubicles from ikea and mm-hmm, she has all mm-hmm. of her toys in there yep yep yeah it's basically yep exactly like yep. that um her bed is to the left of me yeah and yeah so i th- i think the biggest thing you know with for us anyways my wife loves white things yeah so everything's white you know, mm-hmm. like we have like a white shag rug. Yeah, you know, it's our, nice. our couches are all white and everything. But she buys everything that you can clean, yeah, <laughs> or wash yeah. or something like that. And mm-hmm. yeah, since this is like my office and her room combined, yeah. I just make sure that she cleans everything up. <laughs> where like, Where is she now? It's just her playroom, but on her bedroom. Like, is she sleeping somewhere else? No, yeah. Um. No, she's not sleeping right now. Um, you didn't kick but, her out, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. <laughs> daddy's podcasting no nope, yeah and my kids stay up super late i don't know about yours but like no. we try we try to keep a bedtime but they just they stay up yeah no and, they're in bed right now they're like oh, we're same nice. time zone yeah they've been in they they went to and they were up like what well, for us it was late and when when they get to that witching hour it's no uh-huh. good dude yeah no yeah. like especially ellie she just like flying out like she when she yeah. when she scraped her knee not a good time to be doing it like yeah. just yeah she, it just sent her over the edge so yeah, kids yeah. are usually in bed seven thirty, seven seven thirty, and it's oh been, man, yeah, it's I kinda, could get yeah. so much more stuff done if I could do that. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it's 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 been nice, like, and that's been over the last couple of years. Yeah, starting to get a little nice. bit more more towards that. Yeah, and yeah. Then we give them a and, clock in their room; they're not allowed out until seven o'clock the next morning. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think a kind of a tough thing for us is. Um, neither one of us really have like secular Monday through Friday jobs. Mm. So there's not really, you know, we don't really have a a schedule per se. Yeah. That'd be tough. And and I don't know. I kind of feel like it's, it's spoiling in a way, but in a way we're in, it's like a selfish thing, right? Because I can keep them with me longer. (laughs) <laughs> totally like it, it, it's well and especially like on a day or a week like like this week like i left on i they went to bed on tuesday i went to the mm-hmm. airport and was gone all week i came home today and after a couple of delays i got home at like four o'clock spent like two hours with them and then yeah. ellie scraped her knee and started to explode and i'm like all right well i'll see you on monday at this yeah. point like i like they went to bed and i won't see them i'll be gone in the morning before they're before they're up so yeah. i mean but at the same time like it was worse before the pandemic because yeah. I would I'd be out of the house before they got up and I would get home as they were eating dinner. It was the worst. It was it was absolutely. And this is just life for yeah. so many people. They mm-hmm. just like they don't see their dads like kids yeah. just don't see their parents like that. I don't know, man. So yeah. there's obviously a bunch of terrible things with covid. But like this is definitely like working from home has been has been kind of nice. But what yeah. um what do you guys do that keeps you kind of different routines and stuff? Yeah, so um, we kind of always had some sort of our own business mm-hmm. doing something. Um, my dad 
was always like that too. Always had yeah. a business going. And so I kind of, it, it kind of reminds me of, have you ever read the book of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? No. Oh man, that's such a good book. You should read it sometime. But my Kindle added to my list. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you know, the, the premise of it is he compares two different dads and neither one of them started out rich, yeah. but both of them had two different philosophies on mm-hmm. like wealth. Yeah. And um, it kind of just compares the two. And, and I think that was that was something that I always learned from my dad being like an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because you can control how much money you make. Mm-hmm. You know, you if you work at a company and I've worked at different companies over the years, you know, and stuff. And I just I always struggled with it because no matter how hard you work, for the most part, you, you're you going to make the same amount. Yeah. And like my dad's thing, like ever since we were kids was because we'd say, hey, I want to go to the movies. And he'd say, go beat the streets. Yeah. Yeah. What he meant by that was, you know, go mow lawns or, mm-hmm. you know, go do something even at a young age. And I kind of always kept that with me. Just, you know, if if my wife and I want to go on a trip, mm-hmm. you know, if I was working at a regular job, then we'd have we'd have to save up X amount of time. Whereas doing my own thing, um, I can just be like, OK, I need this much money. So I'm going to work, you know, my butt off for a certain amount of time till I make it. Totally. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've, right now it's mostly like we do like some jan. We have some janitorial accounts. So like mm-hmm. cleaning accounts. Yeah. Um, we do some like construction. Um, I've always my dad's been in construction forever. So I have kind of like a jack of all trades master of none <laughs> type thing <laughs> there's another side to that 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 um quote or whatever that saying that like people forget and i'm forgetting right off the top of my head it's supposed to, it's much better than that like it's or, or yeah um but it's better than a master of none or a jack of like it's it's actually a very positive thing that i, right. I I'm not mm-hmm. gonna look it up at this point but yeah it's a, that's yeah. a good thing that's awesome mm-hmm. man so like, yeah and then uh just the on the side um my wife and her two sisters and mom they run a taco truck Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are, yeah, you're just busting your Mm -hmm. ass all the time. So we're, we're always, it's, it's kind of funny, like, because people are like, oh man, it seems like you're like never working, but I kind of feel like I'm always working. No kidding. In a way, you know, like maybe I'm like, I'm home a lot or we're able to do a lot of things or travel or whatever it is, but there's, there's always something going on. Dude, you just touched on something that hits home in our household big time because Chelsea's a photographer. Oh, so it's like yeah. well, you take pictures for like an hour and then you're 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 good. And like nobody very few people have a have a good understanding of like what that takes to well, number one, no matter what the business is, what it yeah. takes to run your own business. Like right. and, and it's like if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. and if it wasn't risky, everybody would be doing it. And this that that notion of well, you're home all the time, you're hardly ever working, like is definitely a perspective that people have of Chelsea, and it couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, like other than exactly. people maybe like who listen to me talk opposite about it. Like, yeah, we from a parental side of things, from cousins and my my brothers and sisters, like nobody gets it. She busts her ass off, dude. Yeah. And yeah, because it's sure. not a nine to five, it's like, well, must be, must be nice. Mm-hmm. You after you, yeah. Please, yeah. Show mm-hmm. me how it's done. I have a yeah. huge amount of respect for that hustle, dude. Yeah, and I think like another thing is it's it's probably similar to because a lot of the work that I do is like contract work. Yeah. So I'll like go, but I still go and like bid the job, get the yeah. job, you know, or whatever it might be, do all the proposal, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. And so then people are the same way. They're like, you know, you don't even like do the cleanings or like you don't even do the job. It's like, well, yeah, there's still a lot of work to it. It's not just the physical part of being there doing it. There's yeah. the, the prep before it, you know, and then there's all the paperwork behind the scenes of running your own business. So. But then, and then, yeah, like you're in a, you're in a, a whole other league too, that, um, isn't isn't necessarily what chelsea does but certainly some of my friends experience this as well where it's like people count on you yeah to like pay their bills like to to, for their livelihoods they count on you Mm -hmm. like is that now that i'm like mentioning it like do you ever think about that like is that is that part of like part of the stress and stuff that comes along with that yeah it's it's it definitely can be stressful i 
I've never got to the point of like having like full on employees. I usually do yeah. subcontracting. Sure. But I've done long term subcontracting with especially like with the cleanings, you know, I'll yeah. have I had like a girl that worked for me for like two years. Yeah. And so in a way, she basically was an employee. And yeah. so like, you know, I do think about that stuff and especially like with the con- like construction. Yeah. If I can't get the jobs in time to like give someone steady work, mm-hmm. like that's tough, too. And yeah. Like, I don't, it's not to the point where like, you know, I can't sleep at night, but it does to some extent bother me when I, you know, I'll have like a big lull in jobs and then I'll get a text message from, you know, a guy saying like, oh man, like, do you got anything going or coming up? You know, Mm -hmm. one of those things where, you know, it, it bothers me personally, even though, you know, they aren't necessarily my employee and, you know, I, I don't necessarily like. I'm not promising them that I'm going to take care of them, but yeah. in a way, like after so many years, they kind of rely on me. How can you not, how can, yeah. how can you not feel some sort of attachment or something yeah. like, yeah, I mean, you're a human being, like you, you have a heart, like, how can you, I don't know, this, these are the things that, like I say, like, there's not generally thought of when you think of like somebody, like you think of a boss or a business owner, like. You just, you really just see like the surface. Usually you never really think about or get to see anything that kind of happens behind the scenes and like what, Mm -hmm. what makes it all work. And that's why I kind of like having these conversations. Like, I don't, I don't always know either. So it's like, you tell me, but that, Mm -hmm. that definitely would, is there anything else about this that like, um, about running your own business, even businesses, the fact that you're doing like multiples, like, how did that even come to be where you like, is it like what my sickness? I, I like I can't stop with just one podcast. You're like, well, I guess I'll start five five businesses. Yeah, yeah, and I actually think there's a big connection between like content creation, yeah, online, and I think that's another thing. Like you had mentioned, you know, like about your wife and stuff. It's the same thing. If yeah. you tell somebody like, oh, like you know, I run a podcast or I run five podcasts, whatever it might be, someone's kind of just like, oh, okay. You know, like totally. they, don't, they don't realize like Can't the wait amount to download of work it. in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That goes into it. And so yeah. I feel like you're right on that. Like, and uh, I, I think going back to kind of like my mom is like a big, like perfectionist. And she was like that, you know, with me growing up too. Yeah. You know, she was the type of mom that, you know, doing homework for math, she would make me like erase it all and redo it because of penmanship. I was like, yeah. well, this is math. Like, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You mm-hmm. know, like all that type of thing. And so I, I feel like that's a, a big thing for me. Like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to give it my 100%, right? Yeah. And so I think that's why it took me so long to do a podcast, you mm-hmm. know, that we finally started, you know? Yeah. But like, I wanted to do it for so long, but I just knew as soon as I do it, I'm going to take it serious, You're you know? Like, yeah. I, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's something that we did for fun and stuff or wanted to do for fun. But I knew as soon as I'm going to do it, you know, I'm going to take it serious and we're going to actually do it. It's not going to be like a a mess around type thing, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, so I totally get like when someone's going to do something, even if it's like streaming, right? I think people don't take it serious. You know, I don't think people are like, oh, you're just like playing games online. Cool. You know, there's a lot more to it than just like turning it on and going. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Like, uh, on a couple fronts, like there's definitely something somewhat entrepreneurial about, well, it's certainly like what we're doing. Like it's, yeah. it's, you know, with the, with Patreon and everything else, like it's, there's definitely like a revenue stream to it. It doesn't necessarily, um, put roofs over anybody's houses, but there's definitely yeah. like the spirit I think is there. And also just the, this, this combination of creativity and the grind maybe is probably the, the, the connecting yeah. piece. Um, but yeah, like this is this would it's just as it's this double edged sword as the barriers to entry continue to get lower and lower, then more people can can kind of come on in, which is good. But then it's like more com- competition and all of that kind of stuff, um, which is this is probably the most like business type of conversation I've had about content creation probably ever, um, because the, the biggest thing is just all the friends that I've been able to meet yeah. on this crazy journey, like. That was that was not the intention, nor did I think it was going to be possible. It was just right. like let's just see what let's just see what happens, mm-hmm. and that's that's the thing that I just encourage. Like anytime anybody says to me, like I'm thinking about doing a podcast, like you you don't know what's going to happen. Your journey is yeah. going to be probably different than mine, but 
that's the magic of the adventure yeah. is that like you don't know what's going to happen so like go find out mm-hmm. yeah maybe and learn I, something yeah. about yourself yeah exactly i think you know you hit the nail on the head there that's what an entrepreneur is they're yeah. somebody yep. who can take that leap of faith not knowing what's going to happen and yeah. i think that's what holds a lot of people back like you're saying when someone's like oh that's really easy why don't you do it it's you not even this it. it's not even necessarily the work maybe they could physically do the work or you know take the time to do whatever it might be but i think the reality is they can't take that leap of faith yeah well they, and the other they need thing that too stability of somebody that's going to pay their pay their, you know pay them every two weeks or whatever it has to come like earlier on like this this entrepreneurial spirit you said you kind of mentioned like kind of was born out of well if you want to if you want something like go go work what did you say like beat the streets is that what it, what it was mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like <laughs> like i love that and that's definitely like in a way that that i was raised as well like we were delivering newspapers at yep. eight years old man like i've been working i've never not had a job from eight years old and in some cases especially where i like i needed to earn extra cash for either school or um to buy a house like I had three jobs, like yeah. I was busting my ass, dude. And this is not like a pat myself on the back. And I, I think we're just kind of like raised pretty similarly, but yeah. like that was just how you did it. It wasn't yeah. like, well, I guess I'm stuck at this one job. Like go get another one, go work. Mm-hmm. We like worked all the time, especially when you're young, you have all the energy yeah. in the world, dude, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. like, and it's just good work ethic too. And then you, the other thing is you don't know how it's going to pay off in the end where mm-hmm. you actually where things actually are going to be really challenging down the yeah. road. And you've got this nice like background, I think. I, mm-hmm. I have a huge amount of respect for the hustle. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, I think like what you're just describing too, like I have, a, I have a similar story of like when I went to college. So, so I would, so jumping back, my second week of my sophomore year, I dropped out of school yep. and... It was because, I was waiting for that to come around yeah. for an entrepreneur. Like you got to be dropping out of college at some yeah. point. What, what was your major? No, you no, like I dropped out of high school. You dropped out of high school. Oh, even yeah. better. Even yeah. better. So, <laughs> yeah, man. OK. Yeah. Like so like if you just you just if you met my dad, like you would be like, all right, I'm doing my own business. Like totally. Just from one conversation. Right. You know? It's that's rooted just like in the, you. Yeah. So that's just the you know what I grew up with. You know, mm-hmm. my mom, my mom was definitely more, you know, she's like, if you're going to do it, you need to, you need to prove it to me. Like yeah. we, we had to do like full on, like, cause my brother wanted to too. Yeah. Um, we had to do like full on presentations, you know, we had to like to my mom of like wow. exactly what we're going to do, what our plan Dragon's is. Den. Yeah. <laughs> or Shark exactly. Tank, I guess you guys are Shark right. Tank. We have, so, did you know that like Shark Tank is Dragon's Den here? It's the same show. Kevin, oh, is it? it's the same people. Yeah. They're, we just call it Dragon's Den. Oh, Anyways, okay. Yeah. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love that. that. I love that show. Oh, um, so good. But anyways, yeah, so. You would too. <laughs> you yeah, would I was that show. I was like, okay, you know, like, in you know, I partly took that like as a challenge as well, you know. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, if I, so I was still 15 and yeah. I don't know how it is up there, but you can't drop out till you're 16. Otherwise you have to like re- make a letter to like the, the board and the state to like. <laughs> I can't like say I looked into out. it. I actually have no idea. I probably should become more aware of it in case Lincoln or Ellie starts. Ellie will yeah. be the one to drop yeah. out, like of the two of them. Yeah, Lincoln Kyrie will be a, with me yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So, Lincoln anyways, will be a student forever. I was just like, I feel like I'm like wasting my time. You know, like at yeah. school, I can already be like making, you know, making my own way, creating yeah. my own business, making my own money, and stuff like that. Yeah. And and then on top of it, I should throw this in the mix. We moved from washington state to wyoming yeah and so i'm born in seattle washington so big city Mm -hmm. and then we went to like you know cowboy state of the united states (laughs) so like i i just did not fit in there like that was it was not my style yeah um on top of everything else were you angry about the move like was it like that that can't be comfortable yeah i i think the because the way that that we pitched it and this is if we go into this next step it's going to be some extra time you ready for it sure man yeah okay <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> love the so, work <laughs> <laughs> all right so basically what happened was when we moved my my dad had a super successful landscaping business in Washington yeah so he's lit, and my mom has some family in South Dakota 
Mm-hmm. So we are like, oh, if we if we can move here, we can be closer to my mom's family. And then we can basically be supported by my dad's company in Washington. Yeah. And, you know, it's cheaper to live here and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, taxes are better. No, yeah. that's a side, that's a side note. Um, but anyways, uh, so my parents pitched it like, hey, let's go there for six months. Try it out. You know, and then at that point, we can have a family meeting, decide if this is what we want to do or not. So me and my brother are like, yeah, I don't care. You know, like we're always up for traveling and and all that type of stuff. And so anyways, we did that. And then I would say uh, about five months after we got there, uh, some one of our our, well, actually, the neighbors that we played video games with Mm -hmm. (laughs) growing up, um, they're their parents called my parents and said, Hey, your accountant is like taking stuff out of your house over there. What? And so we're like, what's going on? And so anyways, my dad starts trying to call her, no response. So anyways, we, my dad gets in touch with some other people over there. And at that point, then all of a sudden, I'm trying to think who it was. Oh, I think one of his employees, actually, one of my dad's employees was like, hey, we just went like to the yard and your work truck is gone. Come on, getting robbed. Holy crap. So, no, this is it gets even worse. So my dad's like, what in the world? So anyway, so he's still trying to get a hold of like our accountant and which our accountant is also watching our house over there because we kept our house in Washington. Obviously. Oh, my gosh. So. She hadn't been paying like any of the bills. So all of our cars got repossessed over there. What? And, yeah. And then so when we had a nice house, so the payments were really high. She yeah. had been stealing all the money Come and she on. didn't pay for like. So by the time we found out, we were like six months late on like the house payments. <laughs> and so long story short, we lost the house over there. Oh my Basically, gosh. we like lost everything. So we had, we really Why like are had, you smiling? <laughs> this is awful. This is a terrible story. Hey, I told you, I see the positive in everything. Okay, I'm waiting for it. So <laughs> This is amazing. It's like, <laughs> it's like modern so family. We lo- oh yeah, God. we lose like everything, right? Wow. And the way my dad was obvious, obvious like anyone else was like super mad. Yeah. But uh, my family is also very religious. So Mm -hmm. on top of all that, we also just we had that feeling like my mom's like, we're never going to sue them. Wow, really? And yeah, so basically we just we tried to be like the good people in the whole thing. And then our accountant tried to blame her spouse, her husband, that he was like abusive and like made her do it and and all this type of stuff. And to this day, I, I don't I don't really know if if that is the case or not. But the reality was, at that moment, my parents were just like, it doesn't really matter if as long as like we're okay, you know, like, I think it's kind of like people that their house burns down. Yeah. You know, you realize at that moment, like, what's the most important thing? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think we all kind of at that moment, were just like, yeah, like, we're okay. You know, like, we're, we're good. And we kind of just, we had to restart, to be honest. And I think that's part of the the reason why I wanted to drop out of school as well. Cause I was like, I can, cause my dad for like the first time in so many years went and got a job at the city. Yeah. And <laughs> it's kind of a funny story cause he never graduated school, never got his GED or anything. I think he also went to like eighth grade or something. You know? What do you make of that? The fact that like the, the whole like apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Like, is that, I, yeah, I, I feel like, there is a lot of connections between me and yeah. my dad yeah. because that in, and the funny thing is I never knew that my dad didn't finish school yeah. until after I dropped out because mm. after I dropped out, he said, Oh, I didn't either. And then it like in all my life had never been an issue because yeah. the, in Seattle, he started as like a box boy at like 14 years old, worked yeah. his way up to the manager of the grocery store. Yeah. And so, you know, he just had always been there. Right. And then he always got jobs being the, like with that experience. Right. Mm-hmm. And then like having his own side businesses and things like that. So when he went to get a job at the city, you know, my dad's not going to lie. So he said, I didn't graduate school. You yeah. Know? 
yeah. they're like, well, you got to get your GED or whatever. And so it's kind of funny because they hired him based on his experience, but they kept yeah. telling him like every few months, like, oh, you got to get your GED. You got to get your GED. Did he ever get it? He never got it. Yeah. I mean, like that's, <laughs> that's the amazing thing. And that's, it's going to be really interesting. I think over the next couple of years, definitely within the next five to 10 years or so, like what are colleges doing? right now like and i i struggle with this big time because education was like it was basically required like we didn't yeah. have any real choices when it came to the whole like when i say i was working as of eight years old like that wasn't a choice i wasn't like sign me yeah. up that looks awesome right. i would love to go out for an hour every <laughs> second day in minus 20 degree weather perfect yeah and then and then have half of the money taken away i want to go buy pogs and slurpees and whatever else um mm -hmm. so yeah it was definitely like that was a parental decision and as time goes on and i just see the debt that people get themselves into and even some of like the variety of choices of majors that you can you can do that don't really do anything for you in the end like no no disrespect yeah. but like it just seems to me that there are so many more options now and i feel mm -hmm. like you're you're living proof of this that yeah you don't have to do that one path that we're all told this yeah. is the only way that you'll ever even survive like let alone thrive which is yeah amazing to me yeah yeah and so like one of the things like going back to like pitching to my mom was i was like you know i'll get my ged you know and i was yeah. like i'll eventually probably go to college because i love learning yeah you know, I've, I've always been that type of person you know so you know, that's what I did. I had to wait till I turned 16 to get my GED. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so when I finally turned 16, I passed that. And then I had high enough scores to get into college. Yeah. Um, but at that time, it was just, it was kind of like rough in our family just in general. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, it was such a fresh thing for all of us to really have to be on a budget and, you know, pay attention to almost everything <laughs> that we did, you know? Yeah. And so I think so yeah, what did they, you go into college for then if you dropped out of high school, but then you got your GD, what was it? What was college then? What'd you go into? So I actually, I didn't go to college until, until I was 25. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's so, a, there's a big jump. I just, I jumped right into the workforce and yeah. let's see when I was 17, I moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. So um, by yourself the first, yeah the first time being away from my family and everything yeah. like that and kind of just doing my own thing and i think it was really good for me I, why I did you it, move why did you move and why texas so that's also a long story but uh it it involved it involved a girl as well oh, so, okay yeah so there is there is a mix of that and i mm -hmm. also had a an aunt that lived in down there in texas Okay, so cousins. it kind of made so, it a little bit easier. So it was a little bit better. Sure. Um, but, I, you know, I definitely, I moved on my own into an apartment yeah. where I couldn't afford it. So I I worked for the maintenance guy. Yeah. So when I wasn't working, I worked at a um, H&R Block. So wow. when I'd get home from H&R Block, which, by the way, I was too young to work there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's like that up there, but you can't sign contracts till you're 18. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think I again. I haven't looked into it, but I can see yeah. it. That, that's so that makes sense. I was, I was basically doing everything I possibly could without doing the signatures. Yeah, and they knew you weren't eighteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it was it was a south side of Dallas, very yeah, seedy. Oh, is it? I've, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never been. That's a, a a good word for it. But yeah. Anyway, so whenever I'd get home, then I would be on call with the maintenance guy. So oh any, any type of on-call job or whatever, then what kind of stuff I'd go help them out. Everything. So, you know, fixing ovens to, you know, changing toilets to really anything that you could imagine. How do you like, and like, is this, I'm trying to think like now there's YouTube. Like if you don't right. know how to do something, you just go to YouTube. Like, I think this is probably at a time where not so much, like yeah. you really just have to figure it out like that. Yeah. It was yeah, so much. Just, I, my whole like point of tonight, I'm just like, I need to like find out about you. Like we've chatted for a long, long time. We've been in around each other's circles for a bit. And it's just like, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> what is happening here? You've I done think, everything. I think we should take a break and let me tell everybody. Cause I feel like 
somebody of yeah. one of my friends is going to listen to this who doesn't know sure. you, which is crazy as that would be, because I feel like all my friends Not know that crazy. you. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> Do they really? it seems like, yeah, it seems like everybody's like, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, like, or, or I'll see like, they'll, you know, look at somebody and they'll, they'll be following you or something. And I was like, man, oh, how does like, so they're so, and I think that's a cool thing, like in the gaming community, you know, it could be someone who's a diehard Xbox fan. They hate mm-hmm. everything else but they yep. know you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think that's, what's so cool about carpool gaming is it has everything. Like if you like gaming, if you like entertainment, there's something for you there. But that okay. PC podcast is coming soon, man. We're going to have to Ooh, figure something else. Well, nice. not to, I don't want to make too many promises here. Like yeah. Ryan, Ryan's <laughs> listening to this, like editing or something. Just like, are you nuts? Like, <laughs> enough is yeah. enough. We have April <laughs> is our day. Like just pin it until then. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you a story. So I was really trying to think about the first time I actually knew you, like or yeah. heard of you even. And it's hard. It's been so many years, I feel like, That's that you've wild. always just been around, right? Not since yeah. we've really been talking as much as we do now, yeah. but that you have at least, I've been following you like, you know, around and, you know, on all the social medias, watching you and doing podcasts for years, right? Yeah, man. But I feel like you were streaming one night. And I remember this so vividly, and you'll kind of realize later why. But I was at my in-law's house for dinner, and my wife started talking to my mother-in-law. And I don't know if you know any Spanish, but they started chisme. So that, you know, like, basically, basically that means, like, gossiping, right? Okay. So, and they have huge family, too. So they have family, and they're from Mexico. So family in Mexico, California, Texas, you know, Chicago. So when they start talking about things going on, it's going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, okay. I'm like, so I'm like, I get the notification. Hey, you know, Sean Capri is on Twitch. I was like, perfect. You know, I'm like, my kids are playing Xbox on my little sister-in-law's, you know, TV or whatever. And so I go sit down. I'm watching you. Or whatever. And anyways, you'll you'll probably remember this night too. But you you go on to tell us that you received a gift from Xbox Canada. <laughs> the Jenga set? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So and so anyways, you pull out this Jenga set. And I was like, what? Like I was immediate, like, man, this is so cool. Like I would love to have that. Like my family plays Jenga. And, you know, like we love going like back in the day, my wife would go to me and my wife would go to the bar downtown Denver and they have like the huge Jenga sets. Right. So we do that all the time. And I was like, oh, man, like an Xbox themed one would be so awesome. Well, anyways, then you proceed to say that each block has a game pass code on it. And so I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Then you proceed to say that you're going to give some of those to your community. So I was like, what the heck? Because I was the first thing that came to my head was you're going to have Xbox Game Pass for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) could have, you know, but yeah. So I was like, wow, the generosity, like I already kind of knew that about you. But that was really when I was like, wow, that's so cool. Something that you got as a gift, you're turning around and giving it to your community and people that you've never met, really, you know, some of them only online and some maybe in your stream for the first time. So I was like, man, wow, that's so cool. So anyways, some codes start going out. And Ryan Turford is putting the codes in chat. Yeah. And then I, <laughs> if I remember right, you were saying one of the missing, a number or a letter. So he yeah. wouldn't put the whole thing so bots couldn't get it. Yeah. And then you would say what the missing one was. Yeah. So if you remember, I'm sitting I on a couch with this. my my cell phone. So so I'm fast. So I'm just (laughs) I'm trying to do this, you know, and I'm going back and forth and switching and trying to listen. And I'm just I'm missing them every time. Redeemed, redeemed. You know, I I think I want to say like maybe three go by. And anyways, I was about to be like, I'm never going to get these things. But anyways, I was like, I'll try it one more time. So anyways, the last one, I have it up and I'm just I'm like, okay, if I remember half of it, type that in. And then if mm. I can remember the other half, and as soon as you say it, right? Because I'm that saying in. it out loud first, yes. and then Ryan is actually transcribing it into the chat, and so most right. people are, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, anyways, I do it, and it's like three months of Game Pass Ultimate or whatever, and I was like, oh man, yeah, that was so a good code. Yeah, it. there was, yeah, they were different. There was there were some in there that were just a month, or some that were three. There was, I think, there was like two in there that were a year. Yeah, each, I think so. Is, 
absolutely wild. Yeah, man. it was yeah. like bonkers. So anyways, I'm just like freaking out. My wife's looking over like, what are you doing over there on the phone? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm all like super hype. So now a funny side story, if you remember this, is there was one person in the chat that was really slow. Yep. Kato. You know, it was our sweet Kato. Yeah. So <laughs> she keeps on doing it and she keeps saying like, oh, I missed it. Oh, I'm not fast. How is people doing this? And and then what I love once again about your community back then and your community now is everybody is just so amazing. Like the people that follow you somehow are just great people. And so I know. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know what, what it is it. yeah but yeah it, really it's uh, so everybody like started rooting for her and like yeah. you know I, I think i even put in there like okay nobody like nobody even totally tied, just we're like holding everybody back like it's like okay. yeah just let her let her get it you know it's like giving the child the football and like letting right. her go for the touchdown yeah. just <laughs> everybody's pretending to tackle and chase and everything yeah yeah, so everybody was like kind of like all going for her to get one and everything. Yeah. And it was just it was so amazing. Like, you know, uh, you know, I got that three month code. I was super hype about it. You know, then we're all like rooting for Kato to get it. You know, I could just tell in your face you're so happy. It was such an amazing night. And then it turned. Oh, special. And so I think this is why, like to this day, and I don't know if you do, but to this day, I think about it. So after after all these great things are happening, all of a sudden you put out a code and nobody says anything in the chat. Mm -hmm. It's like silent. Yep. And we're kind of just like, hmm, Suspicious. that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and then I think you put another code. Yep. And then the same thing, silence, yep. nobody's saying anything. Yep. And I feel like the moment I realized what was happening, you did too. Yeah. I saw it in your face. And like, I was immediately like devastated yeah. and I was just like, one of like the greatest nights is mm -hmm. now like being tarnished by some person, you know, in the chat. Yeah. Cause the know? rule was like, take one. And then once you've got it, then like let yeah. somebody else kind of win it. Cause this is a very right. cool thing. We're trying to make it like super positive and everything. And then, yeah, you're just waiting for like one person to yeah. screw it up for everybody else. And yeah, like, and you're trying, like, I, re I remember that very vividly because I was livid about it. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't know 100% that that's what was happening. But, like, I yeah. was pretty sure that that's what was happening. I'm like, this, yeah. whoever this person is is just ruining it for the rest of them. And it, it wasn't about that point when Kato should have gotten whatever it was next. Yeah. So I ended up, like, I yeah. actually just DM'd her one. I'm just like, here, just just have one. And there was a whole other thing. But, yeah, yeah. I, do, I do remember that. And, yeah, it's like. It, yeah, and it was, I feel like it was really at that moment. Like, I even feel like at that moment we had messed around like in chats and like yep. dms and like talked and stuff like that so i felt like you know you were definitely like a, a cool acquaintance right but i felt like at that moment i saw like the whole gambit of emotions from you and mm -hmm. i was like this guy is 100 percent genuine he is 100 yeah. percent real i saw all the joy and like generosity that you were giving and then i saw like what it did to you when you saw people like not receiving it the way that yeah. you wanted it, you know, like as soon as you knew somebody most likely is like stealing your generosity, stealing like this, like amazing night that you were so excited was, to do. It was really that somebody else wasn't going to get it. Like that was yeah. really the big thing is that there was some, somebody else was deserving in a way to like get something like this. And then somebody was not only like, like maybe somebody made a mistake, you know, maybe somebody didn't realize, yeah. oh, I'm not supposed to take two or something like that. But like it wasn't that it was. And so I felt I I felt bad for other people more than yeah. anything. I like that other people. Sh it should have been their turn and somebody mm -hmm. was ruining it for the rest of the for the rest of the community. Yeah. So, yeah, because I feel like there is. There is like maybe what, like 15 people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it was a small group There was of enough us. to go around. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like I was thinking back about it too. And I was like, I feel like I almost knew all of them. Yeah. Maybe not all of them, but I knew mm -hmm. a decent chunk. And so I think kind of like back to your point is then I started feeling bad that there's other people who are great people too. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, it's just, there's one most likely, like you said, we don't know, but most likely a, a shady individual 
that, Mm -hmm. you know, is going in there and, you know, taking advantage of someone's generosity and maybe they're listening now. Yeah. Identify yourself. You know, now that we just like (laughs) shit all over this person. Yeah. Yeah. If if you come out now. Yeah. Then forgiven. Yeah. Then maybe it was a mistake. Like I said, maybe, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was an error. And yeah. they just didn't re- like they just got a little overzealous because I, I could see it like, oh, free stuff. Like mm-hmm. no, it's not not necessarily as much as we'd like for that to be like a given. You don't you don't just totally take it over. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. But, you know, the thing about it, though, is just like I feel like every everything that happens is like. I don't know what the word is necessarily. It's not undeserved because I think we've busted our ass off. But like there's some um, there's there's bigger, there's better, there's other things out there. And it's like the fact that anybody listens is like more than I ever expected anyways. So basically anything above people just listening, I don't understand it. Like that's yeah. amazing to me. So um, and, and the fact that anybody does, I really do think is a result of other people being very giving. Like, this is something that's, like, really important to me is, like, recognizing the people who change our lives along the way. You know, like, there's people who play, like, these really pivotal roles. And in in podcasting and content creation, there's definitely an identifiable group of people where it's, like, um, Bobby Pauls, obviously. Yeah. You know, um, Andrew from We The Nerdy, um, even just getting me started over there. So We The Gamer Cast is from We The Nerdy's website. Like, there's a bunch of people, like, just along the way. Brock yeah. McLaughlin, the whole, like, Xbox connection is Brock McLaughlin. Like, it's a whole Toronto thing. So yeah. how can I, I don't know, like, and I remember saying to Brock, like, there is absolutely no way I could ever repay you for this. Like, with the path yeah. that he had set me on, there's no way that I could repay him. Mm-hmm. But I can, I can do it to to others. And I don't... I don't even know that. I feel like I saw like a TikTok, but I don't do TikTok. I use YouTube, so it's a short yeah. or whatever. And I think it was Pitbull who said like, you know, people say that um, money doesn't give you, doesn't bring happiness or or whatever. And he's like, it does. You just have to give it away. And I'm like, oh, I love yeah. that. Like whether it's money or whatever, like just mm-hmm. like helping other people, dude, yeah. it feels, it feels awesome. It does. Like it just fills my spirit. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know that. It feels it's kind of selfish in that way. So like yeah. I kind of like refuse the accolades because like I feel great. <laughs> I helped a lady yeah. with her uh, with her flight today. She's like, I don't know how to get my boarding pass up. I'm like, I'll help you there. And she's like, Well, thank you very much. I'm like, My day is made. That's awesome. Yeah. Why mm-hmm. not? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing that up, dude. That's a nice. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice night to kind of relive for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was it was such a beautiful moment. And like I said, I I always like. I try my best to learn a little bit from everybody. Same. Even like my my worst bosses that I've ever had, my worst teachers. Same. Like, yes. I, and I feel like I almost remember them more because yes. if I don't get along with someone right away, like I do my best and strive to find common ground with them. Same. And I feel yeah. like when you do that, you can find something good. Mm-hmm. And when you spend that much time, it's memorable. Big time. You know, the, the time that you spend is memorable. I uh, I had two particular teachers that were just really bad. And um, but I, I learned a lot just from having them as bad teachers, actually. Yeah. And one of the lessons that I learned was it actually doesn't matter if I think they're good or bad. Like they could be the like, objectively the worst teacher on the planet. They grade the papers, you know, and yeah. eventually you might have the worst boss in the world, but they either keep you around or they can fire you. Like they can, these people Mm -hmm. in these positions, whether you like them or not is secondary to how significantly they can alter your path. You know? So, and I had a second teacher and this is where like it, it finally like clicked for me was actually in college. I had a stats teacher who, um, she wasn't supposed to be the teacher. She actually like came in as a, as a sub last minute and something happened with the main teacher. So she clearly, and it was the same thing with my, my physics teacher in high school not experts at their what they were teaching and like i just never took them seriously and that yeah. was and it was to my own fault like i i nearly failed the stats class and i had to drop out of my physics class and it's like not good that's not a positive that's not a positive thing so yeah, yeah later on you kind of i don't know at least i i've come to the same conclusion that even in those cases there's probably something that you should learn and th- yeah. that that helps you out in the long run i think yeah for sure you actually just reminded me of another book I want to say it's, let's see, what is it called? It is, 
How to Lose a Million Dollars. Have you read that one? Oh, I haven't. I've heard of that one, but I haven't read yeah. it. Man, I, I get up on my reading here, man. I just I just finished Reggie's books. <laughs> yeah, that, that was good. And I haven't read yep. that one. So here, yep. one up on me on that one. Speaking of speaking of and and way more like career path stuff than yeah. I was expecting. Like I was I was just gonna be like, here's my secrets at Nintendo, which there are a few. But yeah, secretly in there is the 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 strategy guide to your to your career, unless you're going to start your own business do what you do then right. i don't know that it's really gonna be all that helpful but yeah. <laughs> but no yeah us. all all of that is is amazing and i i think like that book it's really good because basically he became a millionaire mm-hmm. lost everything and then now he's a millionaire again but basically what he said is he learned more losing a million dollars than he ever did gaining it the two oh, times yeah. he did And like, I think kind of to our point is sometimes when we fail, whether or not it's our fault or not, you know, Mm -hmm. or whether we feel like we're at fault, you know, maybe the boss is a bad boss or the teacher is a bad teacher, you know, or whatever it might be. And somehow if we end up failing from that, like, I feel like a lot of times you, you learn a lot more because it means more, you know, Mm -hmm. if, if everything's just going on like normal and, you know, quote unquote easily, then you don't learn as much as when you face adversity, when something is hard. It's very true. Like I, I didn't really have to study or do too much in, in school growing up and then college. And it's like, oh, this is actually pretty tough. And I, I had a pretty pivotal moment too, like with somebody who, Um, I can't remember their name. I think I spoke to them for maybe 20 minutes. It was like a, like a student guidance counselor or something like to get people on track and stuff. And so the path that I was on was like, I was, I was spending two years in a, in a college and there was a transfer program to over to the university and I was facing my moment of transfer and she's looking at my grades and everything. And I wasn't doing all that great. And she's like, maybe you should start looking at like a plan B or C of this other university, like this university you want to get into not going to happen. And that hard truth Mm -hmm. again moment that changed my life i'm like i don't know who you are but you're absolutely (laughs) not right about this like no way am i going to one of these other options like so yeah it it became so clear and then you kind of just like discover what you're made of in moments like that you know yeah Mm -hmm. i I haven't thought of that in a long time to be honest with you like that is a very like pivotal moment in my life and it was Mm -hmm. some office that i was in one time in a conversation with some lady who she didn't know who i was and i didn't know who she was she changed my life that's so cool i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah i love moments like that you know I, i feel like one moment for me that similarly kind of changed my parenting philosophy i guess to some extent oh was so there, there's some family friends that we have. I know the kids very well. The, and they're definitely well off. The mom, when I, I want to say when we first met her, she was like getting into paralegal. Now she's mm-hmm. like a, she's a successful lawyer. Um, and the dad's a doctor. And I just remember, you know, growing up with them, like how just things changed slowly. You know, our families would do stuff together you know, go camping, things like that. And eventually it just, we kind of just floated away, not anything necessarily wrong, just kind of floated away. But we always kept in, in touch, like the kids and everything like that. To this day, you know, I'll, I'll text the the kids and stuff, and which, I mean, they're not really kids, they're my age, but yeah. we'll text each other, see how things are going. But anyways, we, we ended up uh, having dinner with the parents. And... Um, my kids were, Kyra was still like being in arms, being held. Mm-hmm. Hezekiah was, you know, like three, three-ish maybe. And anyways, <clears throat> after a while, um, after dinner, and I, could, I, I should also say the scene. So my, my parents and my brother live in Hawaii. Yeah. And we go back and forth. Um, I actually work there sometimes. And... So anyways, we were, we were out there for like seven months. We, we got back like in, in January. So basically like, you know, like a year ago is when we, um, this happened or whatever. But anyway, so we're at these people's second home. They have a second home in Hawaii and it's just beautiful. It's in the mountains. 
multi multi million dollar home were having dinner in like their open air gazebo that's like ocean view just you know pristine beautiful you know his his driveway he has like a a 2016 uh it's like a Porsche Cayman. There's like only a few hundred of them made in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like he's like elite, you know? Yeah. So anyways, we're, you know, we have a nice dinner. Um, my wife and his wife kind of go and they're, you know, with the kids in the yard and everything. And anyways, we're kind of just sitting there. Conversations mostly had. And anyways, I could just tell he's just staring at Hezekiah, you know? And all of a sudden he looks over and says what what most people say. You know, uh, one day you're going to look back and you're going to miss these crazy times. Yeah. You're going to miss like, you know, your kids running around and, you know, when you think, you know, that it's crazy and you're stressed out and stuff here, you're, you're going to miss this. And so I was like, you know, I'd heard that before, but, you know, I could tell that he had, you know, he was definitely thinking about this and pensive. And then I started thinking over the conversation and he was asking me things about his son. And I was kind of thinking about it that I was like, why are you asking me about this? <laughs> You know, kind of thing. And yeah, basically what ends up happening is he he retells me his story. Yeah. And he tells me how for as long as, you know, as as long as he can remember, he was doing everything he possibly could for his children. And he was like, only now can he realize that doing everything for them was doing nothing for them. Yeah. Whoa. And he's like, and it was, it got way deeper than I ever thought it would, you know, with this guy. And basically he just, he told me each of his kids, you know, he hasn't really had a real conversation with them in years. You know, he doesn't know his grandkids. And he said, I, you know, he had saved up like, you know, bonkers amounts of money, like $75,000 for his daughters to get married each, Yeah, you know, you know, all of these you know, trust funds and all this type of stuff. And he's just like, in the end, like none of them used it for what I wanted them to use it for. None of them like appreciated it. And he's like, in the midst of all this, me and my wife are so focused on being financially stable that we had marriage problems. He's like, so he's like, there was a rift, you know, through all the years with the kids. And then finally now, when they don't have a relationship with the kids, now they kind of blame each other. Also, mm-hmm. like, why couldn't have you done more? Why couldn't I have done more? But really, they were just never home. And when they're home, they're working all the time. And I, I kind of feel like that was that was never my goal, you know. Like, and I, I never wanted that. I never wanted to just be gone all the time. But I feel like so it wasn't like directly like, hey, you know you're so career focused and so money focused, wealth focused or whatever that you're going to lose your kids. But I do feel like, you know, in a day to day basis, I feel like almost the opposite because I'm with my kids so much. I feel like I take it for granted, you know, and then there's people that, you know, maybe they have to work two or three jobs. Like I did when I was young, when I first got married, I got married at 20 And so like I was working all the time, you know, whether it was my own business or random, you know, side jobs and stuff like that. And so like me and my wife are just super busy. And so like I I understand when you're like hustling to live, you know, Mm -hmm. but once you get to the point where, you know, you can live comfortably, maybe not with millions, you know, but yeah, I just I felt like basically now what I try to do is I try to like make enough money that like we're okay, you know? And that's what I focus on is as long as we have enough money to, you know, pay all of the the daily necessities and be able to spoil our kids a little bit, like that's enough. And, And I think the hardest thing for me is, you know, when you have your own business, you're kind of almost always working in your head. Mm -hmm. And I think the hardest thing for me is to like, just like when my when my son comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, do you want to build this thousand piece Lego set with me?" You know, the to be like, "Yes, yeah, like let's do it." You know, or my daughter mm-hmm. comes up like, "Oh, do you want to play like unicorn Barbies with me or whatever yeah. she wants to do?" Yes, yeah. you yeah. know, and I think that's just the hardest 
I think that's the tough thing when it's like, we've been together all day, you know, but like, was it, was it really quality time? Yeah. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that I took away from his conversation is, you know, cause he's like, when I was home, I felt like, you know, we would go through the motions. I took him to sports and did whatever it might be, but there was never a real conversation. And I remember that that kind of being a turning point when we were kids as well, that I think everyone goes through like that teen angst, right? Where you're mm-hmm. kind of just like, oh yeah, my parents don't know anything or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like in a way that's a good thing because like these kids didn't even talk about their parents, mm-hmm. you know, like it wasn't that, oh, I don't like what they're saying or doing. It's they just didn't have a relationship Absent. with them, you yeah. know? And, and I feel like at the, at the time I never really noticed it, but looking back, I was like, wow, you know, that is actually powerful. That's, that's really powerful that, you know, even from a young age, you can start building that relationship that maybe you're not going to see eye to eye all the time, but at least you have a relationship with open communication where you can, you know, talk about things. So yeah, I, yeah, that was the first thing that came to my head when you were talking about that. Cause you know, even though, like I said, it was like a year ago, this happened, but to this day, I just, I think about that. Cause I'm just like, man, like, you know, we're molding you know, like these children into what they're eventually going to be, you know, Forever. you know, they are going to have their own personality. And like you said, likes, dislikes, but we are like a, a huge factor in that, Yeah, you know? And so, yeah, I just, yeah, I def- that's if, if there's one thing that I overanalyze <laughs> is, is definitely like raising my kids and, you know, the right way. It's a good, it's probably a good place to put your focus, man. And definitely something that you said that resonated with me big time was like when your mind is at work, but your kid is in front of you and like, Mm -hmm. what do you do about that? And I don't know, like there's, there's never a day that you ever want to waste. Right. So, but, but I, I, so I'm the positive side of me is like, I'm glad that I had realized, I think relatively early on that I needed to do something about that, like to cut that out. Cause I was definitely my mood and my parenting and my relationship with my kids was, was definitely being damaged by my brain having an argument with somebody about work yes. and I'm standing in front of my kid. Who's like happy to shake a tree. Cause he thinks it's animal crossing. Like just these absolutely like gorgeous, beautiful one in a million moments. And I'm stupidly like concentrating about something else. Like, duh. And I, and it's just such a face palm kind of moment that, yeah, yeah I, I, I regret having some of those moments but I'm glad that like I kind of snapped out of it eventually yeah. and just even just recognizing it that that's that my mind was somewhere else and that he was doing this thing. Like what a gift of a moment that mm-hmm. this happened and it and it hit you in the way that it did. Like you could have just been hearing this and being, you know, an, uh, uh, an open ear and a, and a kind person to, to hear this story. But for it to also like alter you, like, I don't know, take some awareness, I think, on your yeah. part and just internalizing a reflection. So that's, that's amazing, dude. Like that's not something you hear every day. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, th- yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me, at least like when it comes to kids is like finding, finding like a balance of like being a parent, you know, being like the friend to them. Right. They're obviously yeah. still pretty young, but that's already things I'm kind of like thinking about. You mentioned like interests, I think another thing that I always told my wife is kind of going back to what we were talking about, my parents with video games Mm -hmm. was they weren't interested in a lot of the things I was interested in, you know, they, they didn't care about it. So, you know, in a way that did kind of steal some time that they could have had with me. There's no doubt because they didn't care about it. And I think with my kids, that was one thing I took. And, you know, I've always told my wife, whatever my kids are going to be into I'm going to be into them too. Like yeah. whatever it is, if I don't understand it, I'm going to learn it, you know, yeah. cause you know, that's another thing like technology is going to continue to advance. You know, obviously I love technology, but I feel like at one time it's going to, you know, at some point in your life, you're going to start being like, it's going to leap. Yeah. yeah. It's going to leap. And you know, or we're music be already like, has for me, like, like yes. think about music is probably a more palpable thing for people to, yeah. to, yeah, wrap their heads I, yeah, around, but yeah. I th- yeah, I think that's a good example. Like, it's the same thing, you know, like that my parents were saying. Now I feel the same way. I'm like, man, like, you like this? Like, 
like this yeah. is what you consider xyz music yeah. now or whatever and i'm like either it's getting worse or i'm getting older whatever the case might be maybe both and yeah maybe yeah maybe both but again and, does it matter like does it yeah. actually matter if it's objectively a bad teacher or is it bad music like it kind of mm -hmm. it actually doesn't matter there is um there was actually two times in the last couple, maybe the, this is actually quite recent, a couple of weeks, um, Lincoln has his tablet and he has this game that is just awful. Like it's just a, it, but he loves it. doesn't matter yeah. if, it, if I think it's awful and he loves it. And there was twice where he asked me if I wanted to play and I said, no, I don't like you play. Like I, I don't really yeah. want to play. And it was the second time when did it, I'm like, nope, like doesn't matter if I think that this game sucks. Yeah. You play the shitty tablet game because yeah. he was just excited to share that with me. And I'm like, those are the things that like I needed it to be. I don't know. It wasn't like anybody like highlighted it with a pen or anything or like hit me upside the head to go like, no, that's the thing. But some something went off in my brain that went like, that's the moment. Yes. You don't say no. And I had it mm -hmm. one time here, too. I w when we started working from home and linking, it was I was working a little bit later than normal. Lincoln came downstairs. He was excited to see me. And I said, I'm sorry, buddy. I just got to work a little bit longer. And I scooted him out of the room and I came upstairs about a half an hour later and I learned that he had gone upstairs like bawling. And I'm yeah. like, well, that's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Like that half an hour of extra work I did just now, like I don't even know, like I couldn't tell you what it is now. This wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Don't even know what it was about. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And yeah. Yeah. So like there's these definitely these moments that hopefully are helping us along the way. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be at least aware of them anyways. But. Yeah, that that just reminded me when you were telling me uh, telling me about that. Um, so, like I told you, Hezekiah has been into Splatoon too, right? Mm -hmm. So just today, you know, he's he's playing and he's trying to find like you know he's a five year old, you know, but he's trying to find like different strategies and what's the best weapon for different techniques and things nice. like that, and you know, sneaking around people and you know, he doesn't even really know like that it's an actual strategy, but he's like, oh, I found out if. You know, I go in a squid and I go behind them, then I can shoot them from behind. You know, what yeah. I, mean? I was like, yeah, it's called flanking and, you know, good job. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so so he's telling me all these different things. So he's like, oh, like really watch me and like see things and whatever. So I'm watching yeah. him play and everything. And anyways, so it was hilarious because. So he's he's focusing on like one of the enemy players mm -hmm. and I see another enemy player like to the right. And so yeah. I tell him, hey, there's there's also an enemy player right there. So anyways, he goes over, you know, and like takes this one on. And then like three of the other players just swarm him. Yeah. And I could tell he was like getting frustrated. And like, that's one thing. Like, I don't let him do that. Like if he starts like because I don't play that way, you know, yeah. I'm not I'm not like a rager or anything like that. And so like if he ever gets frustrated, I'm like, OK, it's time to take a break. You know, like yeah. if, if you're not having fun, then like, let's take a break. Smart. So anyways, I could tell he was just like getting frustrated, you know, just I could see him like gripping his controller and everything. And so I was kind of <laughs> waiting to see if he would do anything. And finally, he was just like, uh, no, I'm trying to like remember exactly what he said. Uh, but basically, he was blaming me for his death because I took his he changed focus. his path man <laughs> he, mm -hmm. i took his focus away he was like if i would have went to the one i was going to you know i would have been able to take him one-on-one -on -one and i wouldn't have got sworn by and i was like i wasn't telling you to go there i was just saying but no backseat anyways, gaming <laughs> dad <laughs> but it was so funny because i was just busting up laughing because you know he was blaming me for this death right and then like the more i was thinking about it i was just like it goes back to our point that we were talking about is you know like our kids are going to listen to what we say you know, yeah. like, and, and so like the the things that we say, but also, you know, the things we do, our actions yeah. are so huge. They're they're big time imitators of us. And I feel like that was like a moment, like obviously it was just in a video game, but it's like, you know, when we can take their focus off of something and, and tell them to do something good, you know, then we can help avoid like the, basically the opposite of what I did for him. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I could have taken him away from like a possible bad situation in the future and guide him to a better one, you yeah. know, because, you know, while they're still young, they're still no moldable. pressure and <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure. pressure, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all our yeah. fault. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I love he's playing Splatoon, man. Are you guys uh, yeah. are you guys playing any other games together? Did you pick up um? did you pick up Strikers? Oh, we haven't yet. Yeah, I, we definitely just, need to do I that. Snagged it. I just snagged it. I'm going to bring it to Toronto. 
Nice. Um, yeah, there's a, I think we've got like 45 minutes maybe that we can play some strikers. It's good, like this tight, That's awesome. super tight schedule, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah, man. Yeah. So basically, yeah, are you guys playing anything? Yeah. Besides that, um, his kind of big ones that we've been, so the, so the other one is like, you know, I love star Wars, so yep. I'm super big into star Wars. So we have the Skywalker saga. And mm-hmm. we only play that together. And he knows that. That's awesome. So That's awesome. like he doesn't play without me. I don't play without him. Um, so we're we're going through that uh, when we have time. And a lot of like some of the older games he's, he isn't really into like, um, you know, Breath of the Wild's like too much for him. Yeah, he, he gets bored with it and things like that. But yeah. he does. He does like. Uh, building in like Lego world. He really likes oh, that. Oh, nice. Game. So, Does that game work now? I thought it was like real broken. Oh, it's it's pretty bad to be yes. honest. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's like, I think he he loves Lego so much, like in person, yeah. that I feel like he he enjoys doing it because there's you know there's like a connection between it, yeah. and it's kind of funny. Like he'll play that you know maybe for like half an hour or something, and then he'll go play with his real Legos. <laughs> Like, oh, that's you know, awesome. and like he's even <laughs> said it before film. he's like playing this makes me want to play with my legos and i was like okay well, there you great. go like go there do you go. it you know like yeah it's like rock yeah. band makes you want to play maybe learn to play real guitar or, i don't know man i don't know if that ever happened for anybody maybe they're just yeah. satisfied just playing the playing the game oh my gosh man yeah. well it's been like amazing to just kind of dive in deep with yeah. you tonight, my friend. This has been, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And um, I know, me too. Finally did it. Yeah, this has been great, man. Do you want to tell me, you very briefly mentioned your podcast. So let's, um, let's chat about this. Let's chat about the, um, the idea as we close things out. Like, where did it come from? How did you finally, like, take the plunge and start it? And then, yeah, what, what is it about? Where can people find it? Yeah. So basically, what happened is I mostly play games with my son now. Um, yeah. which, because whenever I feel like there's time to play, he's obviously a kid and he's around. And so yeah. I take the advantage to play with him. Uh, but w- after the kids do go to sleep, which sometimes is very late, like we already mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. um, I do have some buddies that, you know, I'll, I'll play games with at night. Usually it's like a, you know, it's usually something like, you know, Warzone or Apex or, yeah. you know, something like that. Four player games. Free something. Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah, no battle royales, things like that. Um, I do love Destiny, but like all of my friends like left it for the most mm-hmm. part. <laughs> so like, where I'm, are you at? It where like did you did you raid which queen? Um, so I have so I'm actually just getting back into it like hardcore. Oh, so, okay. I, see, I yeah. just assume everybody's like way beyond me. Anytime anybody oh, else yeah. brings up Destiny, I'm like, well, obviously you're further along than I am. So all th- so like I'm like a Destiny one veteran, and. Yep. Like I was kind of thinking about this might have possibly been a way that I first came across you is yep. because I came across uh, Iron Lord podcast when there is only like, you know, 30, 40 people watching. So like, oh, I, dude, you're an yeah. OG. Holy yeah. crap. So, that's a long time ago. So I was like a patron when there is only like a few patrons. So I won all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, yeah. You know, like yeah. it was easy to win because there wasn't a ton, you know? Yeah. And, you know, like I was still back when they're like calling everybody's name out live and yeah. stuff. And then slowly there's so many that they had to like put it on the screen. And now it's just like unreal. Super chats yeah. only. And even so, then it's like yeah. to the end. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyways, I um, but yeah, I was super into Destiny 1, you know, like I rated on all three characters like multiple times good and God. challenges and all that type of stuff. And really, a, a, it was a good time in life because Hezekiah was just born. So my my wife would, you know, be with the kid, um, be with Hezekiah like during the day. And I would I was in college, actually. So I was going to like college and then working part time at the bank. And then as soon as I'd get home, she would get rest. And I would just hold him, but you know, babies don't do anything. So Mm -hmm. I would just have, I would have him like, just like on my chest and I'd just be raiding. So, (laughs) so like I, I had like, I had like six to eight hours of destiny every single night. So, and it was awesome. Like I ended up getting like kind of with this crew of dads from the UK. Mm -hmm. And so they were all just like stay at home dads, which was like awesome, you know? 
which I wasn't, but like, it was just cool. Cause we all had like similar things. The hours common. lined up. Yeah. yeah. And then like, you know, they would also be like, you know, Oh, hold on. I have to change like the baby's diaper or like, so everybody understood what was going yeah. on or like, mm-hmm. Oh, baby crying. Like everybody knew it wasn't like a weird thing. Right. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then when I, um, got to meet like, um, like Lord Cognito was like the first person I really like got to, you know, chat with back and forth. And so he was like, oh, man, we got a, you know, Iron Lord podcast clan. Like, let's get you in here. And Mm -hmm. so anyways, like, so that was awesome. You know, got to be with them and everything. And I, I pretty much played until like little after like Forsaken, I'd say. So after like Destiny 2 came out, Mm -hmm. I kind of fell off. That's when a lot of my friends like, fell off and like like we had talked about before like i'm not a negative person like ever so like i'm not a type that's gonna be like oh this game's trash i hate this game yeah, Bungie and I'll never hates play the community. It. yeah mm-hmm. and whatever so like i was just like you know i still enjoy the game and so i'm gonna play it and people are all like raging and like you know deleting it and <laughs> Yeah. You know, like sawing their PlayStations in half. Yeah. Did you see that? The guy I did see that the Spider Man one. (laughs) God. I checked like I that's the that's the PS4 Pro that I have, and that thing is worth some dollars, dude. Like that thing is it's retaining its value. So I don't know what that guy was thinking. But in any case. But anyways, yeah. So I took a break for a while. And I say a break, like I just wasn't hardcore doing it for quite a while. And then I think it was really um I think like when Beyond Light came out, uh I got like the DLC played through it and I started kind of getting back into it. But once again, I didn't have like a good raid party, so I didn't yeah. get like the full experience. Then I kind of took a break till Witch Queen. I got that and I'm like on the very last mission of the mm-hmm. campaign of Witch Queen and I'm like starting to have fun again doing it. And but yeah, it's it's kind of the kind of back to the same thing. Like I don't have like a bunch of people like to do like those, you know, top tier, you know, whether it's like the nightfalls or raids or anything like that. But yeah, I've been, I've been having fun just kind of doing that, you know, solo when I, when I have a chance to play, but yeah, like I said, I don't do a lot of like gaming on my own Mm -hmm. just, just because of the kids. And then, you know, I, I still don't, you know, play certain games around them obviously because, you know, it scares them or, or whatever, but yeah. So if, if I do like want to play like a, a single player game or something and Hezekiah's around, I'll usually like, I stop and beat Metroid Dread. So, oh my gosh, dude! You, I mean, I don't I'm even know if I want to push you to go finish it because th- that last <laughs> boss is hellacious, yeah. man. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. although it sounds like you're actually good at games, so maybe <laughs> maybe you won't have an issue. Like, I don't know, my old man. Yeah, hands no, are like, yeah. No, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been tough. And like, uh, like a few times, like I said, like I don't rage or anything, and and I'm the mm-hmm. same way. Like if I'm playing like late night, like with the guys or whatever, then you know I'll definitely be like, all right, you know, like I'm done. Yeah. Like if I'm not starting to have, like not have fun, and so like uh, there's been a few times with Metroid Dread that I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, I'm I'm taking a break. But I don't I don't know if like if I went off on this rail or you did, but basically what I was coming around to about my podcast podcast is, yeah. is two guys um, that I actually had never met in person yeah. or whatever ended up being from a town in Washington that I had lived in for a while. So oh, like one of those crazy connections. Right. And yeah. I still have like friends there. So anyways, we had uh, just like met up and we'd play games at night and stuff like that. And, Actually, the last time when we were coming home from Hawaii, uh, we flew there and we got to meet them in real life, my wife and I and the kids. And so that was super awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, to get to meet them and everything. But it's anyway, special, dude. That's know, it, it is. is. It, it really like, is. It's unreal. Yeah. And I think like people think it's like if people aren't in this space, they think that's like a crazy, crazy thing. But of like, course. you know, but like I was telling my wife, like I would totally fly to Canada to like meet your family, you know, yeah. like I was like, like we, that would be so cool. Like in come to like, Rome, dude, yes. we're doing extra life in Rome. Like come yeah. play with us for a day, dude. It'd be super yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, and but, yeah. I don't know why nobody's coming to Canada. It is so cheap here. You guys, your dollar is worth like 30% more. Yeah. Dude. Like it's we have, way yeah, we, to be honest, we've actually thought about it. And one of my wife's uncles 
lives somewhere in Canada. I don't even know where they oh, live in Canada, go. but yeah, they moved up there and it's kind yeah, of a big they, place. <laughs> yeah, it could it could be anywhere to be honest. I don't know, but <laughs> That's anyways, what Ryan would say <laughs> <laughs> it could be anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I I know it's like around where you're at because like in the middle, it's not over there, over there, you know, yeah, it's somewhere yeah, in, the in the middle. Yeah, we're not really near water. That's basically yeah. you're, you're not, you're not like on the island or you know, no, no. But anyways, yeah, so. While we were playing, we found out that we, like, so they're two fleshly brothers, I should have said. And so I found out that we all, like, we all like Star Wars. We all like hockey. And so, like, we all just, like, we kind of found, like, things in common. about hockey. Oh, my god! I know. We we haven't talked about hockey. Go ass. Yeah. No, and so they are, um, their dad's from Edmonton. Yeah. That's where I'm from. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's where I am. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And the funny thing is, and... Like, this might be a crazy thing to you, so I kind of figured who their team was, but no, they're actually Canucks fans. Yeah, that's hilarious, because, okay, man, I'm just like, maybe I know this person. <laughs> it's like, because I, I, I went to, well, yeah, I grew up with a, with a kid who, and a guy who um still friends with now. Yeah, Edmontonian, always fan of the Vancouver Canucks, like, yeah. Pavel Bure, and yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. good times. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, anyway, so, like, we kind of, like, started, our gaming session started talking about Star Wars. Because all yeah. this new Star Wars content coming out. And anyways, like we'd end up like sometimes we'd like be done playing and start talking about something. Then we'd like go yeah. on for like an hour. Classic. And then like we would always like joke about like, man, we could have just recorded a podcast, you know. There you go. And mm-hmm. so that went on for for a while. I'd say probably a, a good year maybe or so. And finally, I'm like one of them was like, we should just do it. Like, let's just do it. And I was like, okay, but like, if we're going to do it, like we need to really do it, take it serious. Like, I don't want to just do a couple episodes and be over, you yeah. know, like I want to give it like a good go. And, yeah. you know, like, and like I said, is, you know, all of us need to do it for fun. You know, yeah. like our, our whole focus should be that we're doing it for fun. And if anything happens, cool, you know, but like you said, I think the coolest thing is, you know, I think we, we got maybe like, I don't know, five or five or six episodes or something out. And even out of that, just having a couple of people like DM us and say like, wow, that was really cool. Or I liked you, like how you thought this or that. And I was like, that's it. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, like, that, right. Like this, <laughs> that was, there's nothing that was better than this. <laughs> yep. Yep. I completed. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, man, I, I, I totally I totally get it. So what is it? What is it called? And where can people where can people find the yeah. stuff? And we might as well kind of like close things out with that. Yeah. And, and you can let people know where they can. A lot of people in the community already know who you are in the discord and everything like that. But yeah, they'll let people know where they can find you and all your stuff. And also you got a giveaway going on right now, too, yeah. man. You're just crushing it, man. I know. Yeah. So um, it's called the Mostly Star Wars podcast. Amazing. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, so good. I mean, no. <laughs> No, I actually didn't even pick it. It was one of them that was like, hey, I think it'd be cool. Like, I don't want to like, I don't know if you'd feel weird about it, but I think mostly Star Wars would be cool because then that doesn't keep us to that. We could talk about, you know, pop culture things and it's brilliant, dude, whatever, so you know, good. and, and yeah. I was like, yeah, that's why, you know, actually, OK, I have to say that I have to tell you how I got mostly Martinez. Yes, please. So anyways, my my gamer tag forever for years was mojo jojo yes and so like that was just it because my my real name is josiah Mm -hmm. and so like some people used to call me jojo and Mm -hmm. it it just kind of came from there and anyway so i was like oh it's just kind of a funny name you know from powerpuff girls or whatever and so i didn't know that i didn't know that connection at all i okay (laughs) i just thought it sounded neat yeah so anyway so I had that forever. And then I was like, you know what? I got to change this. I have something like a little bit more like mature. Right. And so I was like thinking about it. And anyways, but around the time, cause you know, you can only like change it so much before you have to pay. Right. Like on as well. Penalty. Yeah. So anyways, I was like really thinking about it. And anyways, I had this conversation with like a bunch of my friends and yeah. everybody was saying, you know, that like I look white, like I look hundred percent white. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? How do I look white? You know, like I'm Mexican. And I'm anyways, so anyone's like, oh, man, you're like, you're so white. And anyways, I was like, well, I mean, my mom is like, she's like Italian and like German, Norwegian, you know, like yeah. European kind of and stuff. And I was like, if you like, and this is funny, I'll wrap around to it. But um, we did the, 
the DNA test. Mm -hmm. And so now I have proof of this. But anyways, so like we were just kind of joking about it. And somehow in the midst of it, you know, maybe there's a few drinks involved. But by the end of it, I'm yelling. I'm mostly Martinez. That is hilarious. So (laughs) anyways, from that, it just kind of became a joke, you know, because my mom's last name is actually like Irish. So her family name is O'Lucy, like full on Irish. So instead of that, like I'm mostly Martinez. So Dude, it kind of came from that. We had the DNA test. Like I'm more Latin than anything else. So, yeah. you know, I'm definitely mostly Martinez. But anyways. I mean, and the alliteration doesn't hurt either. Yeah. But that is amazing, dude. Holy but, crap. Yeah. Hey, I, I speak it. Spanish. I mean, yeah. So you don't anyways. have to explain <laughs> yourself to me, dude. I, <laughs> I believe it. I don't, oh, yeah. Man. But I anyway, so yeah, mostly Star Wars. Yeah, I was like, no, dude, like, yeah, I love that, you know, because it 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 keeps it open to whatever. And then obviously it is kind of a nice thing, like a connection. So anybody that I know are friends, you know, can kind of see there's a little bit of a connection there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so mostly Star Wars on YouTube. And um, yeah, we're actually we're doing a giveaway uh, for 100 subscribers. The last time I checked, we were at 95. So. Oh, let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, Send me so the link. Like we'll get the link away. in the show notes. <laughs> Links in the show notes. You'll be you'll be a hundred. No problem, dude. Yeah. Well, you're you are a natural at this, man. Like you probably knew that going into it. The fact that you were accidentally having podcasts with friends after yeah. a game, like that's just a tells you everything that you need to know. So do and now is a great time to be jumping into a mostly Star Wars podcast as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's, it's, it's not like um, when we started the Xbox drive in the doldrums of of Xbox days where I really like the question I first had was like, who needs an Xbox podcast? There was like <laughs> nothing. There was nothing happening. So, yeah, yeah, a good time. This is a great time to start up a mostly Star Wars podcast. And mm-hmm. I'm proud of you, dude. That's awesome. I know you were talking yeah. about that and thinking about that for a long time. That's awesome. You got it off, yeah. off the ground. Yeah, yeah, so super excited about that. Um, like you said, um, hopefully it's soon. As soon as we get that 100 subscribers, we're going to draw a winner for any digital Star Wars game on any platform. So, Dude, yeah, that's so, a big yeah, prize. <laughs> yeah, so any anywhere that you play you know, a Star Wars game digitally, digital code, um, that's going to go out. And then, <laughs> yeah, on the side, so yeah, I... I'm also, or yeah, I also got a code from Rogue Games, the developer, um, for their Super Impossible Road. So it's a pretty fun game. Um, if he, if anybody hasn't played it yet, I think it's it's on a lot of platforms. I know it's like on it's on Steam and Switch. That's what the codes for my code for is Switch. Um, but I want to say it might be even for like Xbox and PlayStation too. I'd Mm -hmm. have to double check. Uh, I think it basically, is. Yeah, basically, it's kind of like you're like a marble, like, a, you know, a steampunk marble. You can, like, change it out, customize it. But basically, you just race down this course. And so besides, like, you know, racing each other, you could fall off. But it's kind of like Star War- Star Road or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you could also use that to your advantage because you could fall off the edge. And as long as you land on a piece of this winding road, before like 10 seconds or something, you can keep going. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, that it's, sounds awesome. yeah, it's a super crazy, it's a super crazy fun game. Um, me and Hezekiah experience. have had like a, a blast doing it. Nice. Um, but anyway, so yeah, right before the show happened, uh, I, I pulled a winner. And so I'm actually, because this is probably going to be put up on Monday, right? A couple more days. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Patrons so, will get it right away. Patrons will get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the we're gonna announce it now, and then I'll I'll probably DM the person on Monday, um, if they cool. if they haven't seen the show. But anyways, so the the winner you're literally drawing right now, like as we speak, mm-hmm. this is happening. Okay. Yep. Drum roll, production. Ryan, producer Brian doesn't edit this podcast. I don't know. Why I keep calling him. Okay. Out. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is actually somebody that we just talked about. It is Darth Canuck. So no. Oh, that's amazing. Yep. That's awesome. So yeah. So that's my buddy. Well, and, congratulations. Um, yeah. 
I like I've been telling Sean about this too. Just I've I've received so much over the years, you know, randomly in giveaways and I didn't even mention that. Uh mm-hmm. you know, the the awesome thing that you do, you know, for for Bobby is such a cool thing. You know, I I've, I've got to you know uh help out like the autism society or whatever. That was really cool and um yeah just i've i've received so much over the years from like you said even just like mentors cool people and stuff like that and finally you know i felt like i was at least in a place where i can start giving back you know to the the small little community that i have on social media and so yeah i've been i've been trying to give away something like once a month and you know so that's what i'm just i'm gonna keep on doing that just at least giving something because like you said, it's almost a selfish thing. It feels yeah, so good feels to good. like, it feels good to like, you know, give somebody something. And, you know, the the few giveaways I've, you know, given away were to people I've never met before. Yeah, man. And so it was so cool because I still talk to them almost every day now. You know, I met them go. through a giveaway and mm-hmm. like one of them's like in the UK. Not and, a bot, you know, a real person. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's so cool to just, you know, now you, you met under you know, a circumstance that's not necessarily like going to bond you as friends or anything, but you end up finding out you have common interests and the best. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's a, it's a such a cool thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we are mostly star Wars. Um, yeah, we're going to continually be doing giveaways as we hit milestones for that as well. Um, if you like star Wars at all, I think that you'll enjoy it because we have some deep conversations and, um, if you know me, everything's going to be positive. You know, if, if you're looking like for a, a, you know, a hate on certain show, like episodes or movies might not be the one for you. But for the most part, we try to stick everything positive. We're not going to avoid, you know, things that maybe we would have done differently. But yeah, it's never going to be no- negative. We want people to come away like refreshed and loving Star Wars more, not less. So. Good, good. You know, this this is going to actually take over. Um, I think people are are slowly but surely realizing that we're sick and tired of the negativity and the, the Debbie Downer. Like, let's actually start to love and appreciate the things that are entertaining us. And if we ain't got nothing nice to say, then don't say nothing. There you um, go. All right. Mostly Martinez. The one of the be- – I'm so glad you told me the backstory behind that name. Um <laughs> This this is pretty this is pretty much the end. I'm gonna have to have you back on because we didn't talk about yeah. four or five things that, that we were going that, that oh, we've been man, chatting so about. many things we didn't talk about. Like we talked about my first console and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> we have yeah, so there's much more. more. <laughs> we'll have to have you back for sure. Um I wanna say thank you so much for all of your support and just like just being a kind person to chat with tonight, man. You've really just lifted my spirits tonight and yeah. I appreciate you and we're definitely gonna have to have you back on uh, as soon as possible, my friend. Yeah, I super appreciate you inviting me on, letting me be on and uh, talk to you in front of all of your friends. That's a that's a big deal for me. And like I had said before, you're you're actually such a huge role model for me. You're such a great dad, husband. Don't you're like, like I could go oh on God. and I, yeah, <laughs> I can gush about you. But yeah, we'll leave that for another time. Links are in the show notes, so please, let's get this YouTube channel up over 100 subs. You guys, any, most of you, I think, actually, many of you, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of you have your own YouTube channel. We've all been there, or we're all currently striving to get up over 100 subs. It's a huge deal getting that slash custom URL at youtube.com slash whatever you want to have. It's a, it's a big deal, so um, I know in very short order... Uh, we'll get we'll get this crew up over 100, uh, 100 subs at YouTube. What a wonderful conversation! And I really, you guys know me. I don't I don't like um, don't like compliments, but uh, and mostly Martinez. I think you know this as well. But I did enjoy revisiting that that one night, that fateful night with the Jenga Tower Kit. That was that was very sweet. And I was <laughs> I have to be honest. I was a little worried that he was going to bring up a, a moment. He's like, "You will remember this." I'm like, "I hope so." <laughs> Because <laughs> I, uh, you know, you create a lot of content and there's a lot of stuff out there. And um, I, I, I was hopeful that I would actually remember. But yes, I, I uh, a very fond memory there. Um, usually, 
you guys. We end the show with a clip of Bobby Paul's. And uh, this week, we're actually going to just do... Uh, we're going to go back to old school. We're going to do Jason from... Or I don't even know. Whoever, Jason's dad. Um, Jason's delinquent father who, who lost Jason from Heavy Rain. This is a clip that I used to do on the show for many, many years. Um, Josh Stapleton has been sending me wonderful clips of Bobby Paul's the Nintendo Guru. And you know what? I would love to go snag that and record it. It's, it's just an extra step that it's, like I said, it's about 11.05 now at night. Yeah, I got I got to get to bed. I got to get this up. I got to I got to publish this to the Patreon, send it all over to Ryan so he can get it up to YouTube and everything. So I'm just going to end it here. But um please guys, get get uh, get, get these guys up over 100 subs. That'd be great. And also everybody all of our ultimate patrons go click the links if they haven't already. And I hope that everybody's enjoying uh what is it? Mar- Mario Strikers is just right over here. I just picked it up. So man I have like way too much that I want to do in Toronto and I am not there for nearly long enough, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm so glad that you guys were here. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean Capri, Sean like Connor, you can put like the pants, leave a comment on youtube.com slash carpool gaming at the video and um, just be kind to one another. This was great. I'm so glad you guys are here and I'll talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Jason. 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 Jason! Sean! 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 Sean, where are you? Jason! 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 Sean! 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 Stop! Stop! Jason! 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 Jason!